Everybody. We're live, Rand. We're live. Do you think? Well, you're supposed to you're supposed to tell me that all right, anyways. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> uh Sorry. we are live for the Patreons uh right now, and obviously a week later for everybody, but I'm one of your hosts of the Xbox Two Plus One, Randall Thor nineteen, man with the million, and we have managing editor of Windows Central, uh Jez Corden here as well. What's going on? Uh it's going. I'm really glad that you're hosting because I I yes. I was like oh wow Rand even remembered that it's Xbox Two Plus One I would have forgot that it is Xbox Two Plus One but <laughs> I would have been like oh welcome to the Xbox Two it's like oh yeah it's a different <laughs> show but yeah good, good job but we're good gonna job. get we're gonna get right into it because we have superstar here one of my absolute favorite persons in the gaming media the one and only Grubster the Jeffrey Grub Grub. Uh, of giant bomb with us right now what's going on jeff and thank you for joining us today on xbox Why two plus one are there brown m&ms in my m&ms my rider I'm sorry. i agreed to do this show very <laughs> clearly stated no brown m&ms there i see three in here you missed some i'm sorry so that, that'll be, be for uh... the next time a year from now when we when we talk about what happened during xbox developer direct the second time around yeah right? yeah. <laughs> you, yeah you think uh one, once per year for those you think right yeah I, I, I don't think they're gonna go crazy with them uh they probably i mean i don't think microsoft thinks they can support more than that and xbox or the e3 show per year and we'll see if that's going to be e3 or not yeah. in terms of branding mm. but I think they'll do the big Xbox E3 show and then a developer direct and then maybe occasionally some weird thing in the fall sometime, but well, usually and, and not. Sometime a standalone, like the Starfield thing, right? They can, they can. Right, exactly. They could just do that for the big games that are coming. Yes. And yeah. that, that'll be perfect. Yes. But would that, wouldn't but with, those be branded developer direct, though? Like Starfield developer direct? I don't know. I suppose they could do that. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason they wouldn't. Nice. Yeah. Because, I mean, Nintendo does that with Nintendo directs. I mean,. Sony's even done state of plays so that have been one game branded. They did that for Hogwarts Legacy. So yeah, I think they could probably yeah. just do a developer direct based on Starfield. I suppose. But before we get to the nitty gritty, before we get into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to, uh, you know, hey Jeff, I know everybody mostly knows you, but you're currently at Giant Bomb. Let let people know what you're all about, where they can essentially find you at for all your hot takes and your your leaks. You know, because you were the first person to talk about Hi Fi Rush, and look look what happened. Yeah, here it is. I was, um, I remember hearing like late last year, like, yeah, Tango Game Awards, like that thing that you're talking about. Hey, they say, uh, hey, everyone's upset you weren't at the Game Awards. Uh, the thing that's going to be there early next year is going to be this new smaller thing from Tango Game Works. Well, oh, that, okay, that sounds interesting. I doubt that's going to help anything though. And boy, I was wrong. That game came out and really seemed to be the, the, the medicine for what was ailing Microsoft early this year. But, uh, yeah, you can, um, I, I work a couple places, I do Giant Bomb. And where I, I do a daily news show Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday called Game Mess Mornings. That's every day at 11 a.m. Eastern. You can catch that on twitch.tv slash giant bomb. We go over the day's news uh, and have conversations about it pretty in depth. And I, I, I really enjoy doing that. It's one of my highlights of my day each day. On Tuesdays, then I do the Giant Bombcast. Um, I do that with Jan and Jeff Backlar and our crew there. Uh, that's our, our big gaming podcast where we talk about what, what we've been playing and other things that are going on in the industry. And then I also do uh, my own sort of game mess universe stuff, which I kind of started because of the pandemic and E3 was crumbling. And so I was trying to put together like, oh, here's where you can follow all the things that are happening. And that kind of just turned into my personal brand a little bit. We got a Patreon. It's uh, it's just uh, patreon.com slash game mess. And you can follow us there, and we do a uh, uh, the Game Best Decides podcast on Thursday nights, and we do the last of the Nintendo Nintendo Dogs on Tuesday nights, where we mostly just talk about games that would make Rand upset. Uh, yeah. games primarily, <laughs> yes, so. that is the one show I don't think I've ever tuned into, but I always check out the other ones. If you're talking about Thank Nintendo. You, I, I am that. not here. I'm not. I appreciate I'm not it. showing uh, up. I understand. Yeah, we. <laughs> That's where we. That's where we would talk shit about you. So that's good. No, well, there we again, go. I won't. I won't hear. <laughs> I swear, yeah. you guys. I didn't. I didn't ask. Can I swear? I don't know. This is Patreon yes. only. I'm gonna assume well, I'm okay. This is. This is. Oh yeah. yeah. You could swear. You could swear. We, okay. We, thank you. We we 
We swore a lot talking about the FTC on the last episode. Did we get demonetized for that? No, well, at least not yet. But usually YouTube doesn't care uh, if you, you, they don't want you to do it within the first 15 seconds of a video for whatever, whatever reason. Right, but so it, you would know better than I thought it was 90 seconds, but it's 15 seconds. It's, they change it. So like all swear words it's all, are it's now the same, nice, isn't right? It? So okay. like damn is now like, uh, like shit is now as bad as fuck, which is now as bad as motherfucker. Like all the swear words okay. are now basically the same. They don't want you to <laughs> say, if you say any one of those within the first 15 seconds, your video is demonetized. Um, and you can say them. But you can't say them too much throughout the video. So you sure. always kind of wait until like halfway through something to really say something. Yeah, but you don't really got to worry about that here. <laughs> so it's um, like the no, density of so. swear words. Yeah, we don't monetize uh, this podcast. As people anyway, are so. saying that your mic is a little bit too loud, by the way. So. Oh, dear. Let's what? turn that down then. While you're fixing well, that. Well, 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 well. Um, Jeff, I know oh, you, I know you left uh, from VentureBeat to join Giant Bomb. Was there any... Uh, like, was there any change that was difficult to you to go from like traditional like article written uh you know video game journalism to straight up like personality on camera talking about things i know you you were doing some of that stuff with mike as part of your other podcast but was there like a significant change going from traditional to basically more personality based you moved house didn't uh, was, you it, as well what, what's that you moved house too didn't you for john uh, yeah so i was moving at the same exact time yes i was moving ah. across the country and uh, it's a big country over here, uh, the United States. So it was a big, long, thousand-mile move. Uh, but wow. I, I got that done, and that was honestly the hardest part of the change because uh, going from trying to write stories each day to going on video stuff and and just to talking about what you like, what you're thinking, it's it is a lot easier. It really just is because uh, when you're trying to like when you're writing a story, you have to have a thesis and you have to support it, and 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 it's like well, it's. Honestly, it's higher quality stuff usually, uh, but but people they don't care about that. They what they want is usually to be engaged with personalities. And if you come in there into that environment and you have, a the, you know, theses and you have uh, arguments or to support your ideas, well, that makes that even better. And so, really, it was a pretty simple transition. I had a uh, been pretty well honed to think about the things I want to say and understand uh, what would make them compelling arguments. And now I could just bring that into a video pipeline. That is, I show up begin talking and we get a hours worth of content up on the site in no time. And then I'm free for the rest of the day. And I don't have to stress out about like, did I do enough stories? People aren't reading the stories I put out. Is that, what do I got to do? So it was, it was a pretty good transition for me, especially after doing it for 10 years, I, I was ready for a change. Yeah. So I guess then my, my next thing I was wondering is I'm a YouTuber, uh, you know, like I, I do this for a lot of fun, but there's a lot of layoffs in the gaming media. Right. And yes. it's always horrible to see. Do you, what, how do you, in 10 years from now, if you were to look at like 2033, how do you think gaming journalism will change? Will it remain exactly how it is today? Will we see less websites, more like media focus, podcast? Like, how do you think the industry will change in the next 10 years? Well, I mean, I don't think it's it has stopped changing since I joined it. And I think it was always changing even before I was getting here. I mean... I, I would talk to old editors for old video game magazines and they would tell me about the good old days where they had $40,000 to do the cover art for their, for their monthly magazine. And that's for each, each month. So oh they go out and hire a heart, an artist <laughs> to just do amazing stuff for their cover. And I'm like, Oh my God, those were the, you were flush back then. And they're like, yes, we were, uh, you know, every other page, like these 200 page tomes that every other page is an ad. Uh, and, and this is the only way that these companies had to reach out to dedicated gaming audiences. Well, yeah, they made a lot of money. So that changed pretty quickly. I, it was, I was never a part of that world. I was always part of the online scraping by for every ad cent. And, uh, and so it's like, we were, we never felt on sure footing at any point. So I, I'm, I was always accustomed to the idea that things are changing. They will be changing. I think that you're going to get a scattershot approach to covering games from all sides of things going forward. Uh, it's not like any one solution is the answer. People will point YouTube is, is a solution, but I mean, Rand, you don't have a boss and yet YouTube yeah. can still, it, yes. we were just talking about how they change things all the time. YouTube's the boss, right? They're the ones that decide. They're the, they're, they're, they're they're the, the boss the is paycheck. the algorithm really. Exactly. And they're the ones who's controlling yeah. that, you know, quote unquote controlling that. But yeah, exactly. You have to operate within the means to, uh, to please the algorithm if you want to keep a steady paycheck. And so what well, that's, just as uncertain as anything else and those things change those rules change without any warning without any input from you and i think that's going to mean that things continue to be pretty uncertain going forward i still people are going to want to do this stuff it is a fun job it is um fun to think about games it's also 
as big as games are in terms of uh, of monetary value, it's a relatively small industry. Uh, you can make a big dent pretty quickly if you get to know the right people and if you uh, have if you are if you think about these things in a way that is original and clever. People want to hear what you have to say, and and and, and you'll you know you could kind of not not necessarily conquer it, but you can um, make yourself heard and then get to know everyone else and sort of then build that network from there. And it, that makes it appealing, I think, as well, because you could try to go get into what like music journalism or something that you're just going to get lost there because it's such a big uh, sort of a faceless uh, a place where everyone sort of blends together. Gaming still, you could still kind of come in and say something and people will listen. Yeah. Right. No, I just always find it interesting how things change. Like, you know, it used to be the print magazines were the big things and the websites. And it's just sort of seems like that's all kind of getting diminished because it's constantly just seeing stuff about layoffs or downsizing. It gets a little depressing. Oh, yeah. and, um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I think, you know, we'll, we'll see some big changes. Maybe not necessarily big, but they're definitely 10 years from now will definitely look different than you know uh, the previous 10 but um i know everybody's here media. like every website now has a paywall these days and, and stuff like that they probably see more yep. of that but then it's kind of like who would pay for a paywall when it's all on youtube you know for gaming yeah, media. yeah. but uh, let's yeah. let's talk about what everybody's here for xbox they want to you know they want to hear some opinions from us opinions from you i guess the reason why we're doing it this week instead of last week was because well it'd be stupid to have jeff on to talk about what they're going to show at the the developer direct when Aaron pretty much laid it out. It's like, oh, let's get post reactions. So that's why we're doing it today. Um, so the developer direct, Jeff. Uh, I guess the two prong question here: What did? How did you feel about the show in general? And did you do you think that this is the format, not just the format, that Microsoft should use for these things going forward? I I thought it was pretty well done. I um. Uh, when I when I watched it, I was like, "This is it's got a pretty good pace. It doesn't feel like what was the thing they used to do uh, or have done in the past." Inside was Xbox it it was inside it was Xbox, awful. right? They just went on forever. There was uh -huh. no direction. There was no flow. No pacing at all. Cringy they, dialogue. They yeah, yes. all that stuff. Right. They didn't feel like they were they, they were putting on a show, but they didn't. It's like I don't know. It felt like if you took one of those old Toys R Us VHSs that would sell you know PlayStation and N sixty four games. And you just expended those out to two hours. Like, it was like, okay, you can't maintain this sort of uh, faux smiley, like everyone's excited about all this stuff all the time uh, mon uh, sort of attitude and, and, and build it out to that length. It just didn't work. So this was much more honest and straight to the point. And yet it's still, uh, they still had developers coming out and talking about their games. And I didn't think that would be very interesting. And yet, well, for these games and for the way that they had them come out and talk about it, it actually was, it worked. It definitely worked. It also was, it's nice that they came out and said exactly what was going to be there. And then they had one big surprise and it's like, Oh, th th this is, this is good. This is like the right amount, like the right ratio. We're talking about games that we're aware of. We're getting new information in terms of like what the games play like and release dates. And then you come out and you announce high five rush. I think this is the, um, the right thing for Microsoft, at least for the foreseeable future. They don't have to do something that's, that's exactly like a Nintendo Direct. This can stand alone and stand alongside what they do with their showcase at E3. And I expect them to keep the developer Direct going forward. And like we said earlier, you could just do a video game specific developer Direct next time with Starfield. And then kind of, and then we'll come back, you know, either a year from now or maybe, maybe in the fall and do another sort of general developer Direct. And I, I'll be right there waiting for it. And, yeah. and they, they will have to, rely on that because uh, the, a lot of their games that we're going to be continuing continuing to look forward to are ones that have been announced and we know are coming so you don't need to try to be like okay here we are going to do our our state of play or our nintendo direct where people will expect a lot of new announcements i'm sure we will get to a point again where where we are at that place in our relationship with microsoft and their games where most of the games have come out and they do have more unannounced games than announced games but for the foreseeable future they're going to be in a place where we know most of the games they have coming and so they just need to talk about them more in depth give more details give release dates and so sticking with the developer direct is going to make a lot of sense going forward i think yeah um you, you had put it out there that forza motorsport was most likely slipping to quarter three you know after yeah, they I said think maybe spring a little bit later year, than that yeah yeah um, my hot take is about the showcase and Jez didn't agree with me. Uh, and I don't know if Chad agree, even agreed with me. was that like, I don't think Forza Motorsport should have been a part of that showcase. I think it sort of ruined everything. Like I liked the format. I thought it was an A plus format. I would give it a B plus overall. 
I felt it would have been an A if Forza had a date. But like when you have all the like these four games, and all of them have a date, and then you have just one just sitting in the middle that's just like not nah, 2023 at some point in time, but we don't even know. We don't know right now when it's coming, but we can't even tell you. I sort of felt like it shouldn't have been there, and I understand why it was there because what else? You couldn't really advertise a show with just Minecraft Legends ESO and. Uh, Redfall. So like Forza sort of had to be there. And I guess if it was absent, there'd be a lot of questions. Uh, but you like, so you, you think it's going to come quarter three. I know a lot of people are really on Microsoft for the delays. Do you think that's going to be continue to be an issue moving forward? Or do you, like what, what's your viewpoint on all the delays that Microsoft has been experiencing? Like, is it really dampening people's enthusiasm around the brand? I mean, not as much as games coming out and being uh, incomplete, right? I think that's way worse. And so, like, people are are at a point in in their relationship with games across the board where they are mostly going to tolerate delays. Yes, uh, delays uh, are still a problem, and you still want to avoid them. Uh, but it's just I don't, I, you know, I, I said that I said you know late Q3 or maybe even just out of Q3, um, maybe that's maybe even that that's September October like range. Yeah, that um, like normal Forza like release yes, schedule. Yes, yeah. right. So yes, um, pe- people are going to be okay. Yeah, that that sticks. You said this was going to come out within the next twelve months at last year's E3, and then we do a developer direct, and we don't acknowledge exactly like what we said before. We just say twenty twenty three. It feels like a delay. You didn't even call it a delay. It's it's weird. They they've put this game in a weird position, put fans in a weird position, and that is definitely not not a recipe for making pe- people feel great. But if the alternative is rushing it out, getting a game that is incomplete, uh, the game that just like is forever tainted by by that stink, uh, people will be like, okay, well, don't do that. Clearly, don't do that. We are okay with a delay. Especially, especially when so many Microsoft games have been delayed for the last three, four years, and not not just um, Halo, but like you, you look, Ghostwire Tokyo got delayed um, multiple times. Uh, uh, Deathloop got delayed multiple times. They've delayed just about everything, yeah. and some of the games have really benefited from that. Benefited from that. I, I bet all the games benefited from Psychonauts it. Psychonauts two so, got delayed. Yes, right? Psychonauts two got. Yes, I mean, it was, they, all the games likely benefited from it. Some of them benefited to the point where. Well, these games were in game of the year conversations, and yeah. and and they clearly it's clearly it's the right thing for them, and so it's it's easiest for easy for us to have that conversation now. And so I think Microsoft knows that continues to be the right choice. It's just is this the only tool they have in their box when it comes to managerial options for making sure that these games are in good uh, a good state when they come out? Is it um is, is there no other way to sort of shore things up? without delaying it and it seems like right now no and well if that's all you got then yes keep delaying it i think most people are right there with it yeah um so hi-fi rush was the big reveal from the show you had put it out there beforehand it was like hey hi-fi rush uh is a thing it's gonna be at the showcase and everybody's like okay but nobody really knew like what it really really was yeah i I had i mean there was like a leak that was like a rhythm brawler with the jet set radio future but even still it's like you don't can't really picture that in your mind and then i thought the brilliant part of the show was here's the four is the delay right people are just i I could feel it people were starting to get a little angry like what do you mean it doesn't have a date and immediately they went into hi-fi rush dude i I, hang on a sec who was upset about this bro i I, I didn't just see know anyone people, upset about this, really. I know, well, yeah, because Hi-Fi Am I out of touch, was Jeff? immediately after. Yeah, you're out of I, touch, Des. You're out I of don't touch. Think you're, well, I think touch. you're a little out of touch, but also like they, the way that they said it was like 2023, and uh, they didn't, so they didn't call it a delay, right? Yeah. So it's like I think they're also they're kind of like trying to think, escape, you know, maybe slide this ba- one past people a little bit. At least that's what oh. it feels like. I mean, who knows? Maybe the game comes out in a week. We don't know. Maybe they'll shadow drop that too. Uh, but 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 like as far as I heard, like yeah, it sounds like it's probably going to be a little bit of a delay and. Uh, and not in that 12 month period that they talked about last E3. Why didn't they just say that? Why didn't it say the game's been delayed yeah. if it's been delayed? And you so said on like, the no, Giant they Bomb. Say, they didn't say that. Uh, you said on your Giant Bomb show, like, why not rip off the band aid? Just get yes, it. Yes, rip it off. Rip and, it off. Yeah, it's like, maybe but they probably don't know the date yet. But e- either right, way, that, like, that I, feels like what's the answer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, absolutely. They probably don't know the date, but like, I felt like here's this thing that is probably the negative news, quote unquote, but it's followed up by like the best thing ever. A game that nobody knows, nobody's seen, 
you watch the trailer. It's like, all right, look how incredible this looks. And then you see the gameplay demonstration and you're like, every the more it goes on, the more you're like, oh, wow, this looks really cool. This is totally different from Tango. And then the big surprise, by the way, play it today. And then everybody rushes to download it, right? It, it's like the third best sell, get, selling game on Steam. It's got universal praised reviews and people are just talking about it so much show. It seemed to have overshadowed for Spoken, which was, uh, you know, an exclusive uh, from Square Enix to PlayStation, which is heavily marketed for the past two years that it seemed like Hi-Fi Rush took the wind out of its sails, even though like the reviews weren't great for, for Spoken. But um, yeah, for I know you took its own wind out of its sails, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But here comes this other game out of nowhere that just kind of just is like, look at me. It's like a peacock spreading its its its, its like feathers. For and I, I beat the game. I absolutely adore it. I love it. I can't wait for a sequel. Have you been uh, playing much of it? I have been. I, I played it that day and immediately kind of fell in love. I think it's um, it it is it feels different, but it's fun and it's um it's a lot of different pieces put together in an expert craftsmanship sort of way where you um, I I see this is it's Devil May Cry to the beat. It is um elite beat beat 'em up agents. It's all these things where it's like I, yeah okay yeah I, I understand the, what they're trying to go for here. I'm surprised that they didn't just succeed. They succeeded with like flying colors. They nailed what they were going for. And then, then some, and were able to build on top of it, this massive amount of personality. And a lot of that just comes down to, it is a visually stunning game. Um, the, uh, the, the, cartoon aesthetics the animating on the twos during the uh, actual like cartoon segments those transitioning scene it takes something i've liked before there's a slight twist on it and now i'll like it for different reasons maybe but mostly i'm gonna like it because it's from it's that same kind of game from the same kind of developers nothing wrong with that i'm, I'm definitely more excited about that than just about anything but having hang something truly sec, surprise me it's yeah i think we lost connection hang on a sec the no worries you just, let me know let me know when we're still good can you see can you see it rand on the stream no, you're still live for me. And in fact, I just heard you say, hold on, we just lost connection. Still live for me? <laughs> oh, okay. Weird. Sorry about that, guys. There's something no, no, on my a... internet. I, I keep disconnecting in War Warcraft as well. I need to fix this. Stop playing Warcraft. No. <laughs> no, I won't. Stop. Man, stop you got... we have to have an intervention with this man. I, I, I tell you. I tell you. Every time it's like, hey, what do you what have you been playing on Xbox 2? It's just Warcraft. I'm like, nobody wants to hear you talk about Warcraft. No, they do not. Move Absolutely on from this. Not. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Biggest game I on just, Twitch. I, just saying. Exactly. This, this man. You got nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing. Yeah, you got nothing. Up, you up your ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Hi Fi Rush is just kind of magical, and I um am very relieved to have this thing feel so, this like oh I, I really appreciate novelty and this game coming out of nowhere and then also delivering and being immediately one of the best games I've played in the last year. Ooh. Okay, that's everything I'm asking for from it. It's I'm, really, really good. I think it's the best Xbox exclusive since Ori in the Will of the Wisps. Easily, yes, I agree. Uh, you know, I know people will say Forza, and Forza's amazing as well, but uh, I don't know. Better than I, Gears I, Tactics? What I is mean, this <laughs> heresy? Better than Gears Tactics? No, but Jeff, <laughs> you, know how much, you, you know how much this industry is copycat, right? Absolutely, so yeah. They see something work, and and they copycat it now. Yeah, this now is, this all is the one talk. of my this is my favorite lines is the ve like when it went from video game to video games. When it went from one game to the second video game, the second video game was a copy of the first video game. It was a uh, <laughs> space what was like a space war at Stanford University, and then like Bernie Stolar and a couple other guys saw that. Actually, the first three games they were all copies of each other. So <laughs> yes, like that we've been doing that from the very beginning. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the shadow drop right on their mind right now. So much mm -hmm. so I've seen even act people from Xbox talking about it. Like, oh, now you want to talk about shadow drop and people are want it for everything. There are people out there that think Starfield might get shadow dropped out of all games and stuff. Yeah, and, no way in hell. <laughs> um, I, I think it only really works because of the hike. Like when I started playing the game, I was just, this, this game is so incredibly polished, right? I guess the question I have, and this goes into something else you've talked about before was... I sort of feel like this release type of thing makes sense for Microsoft's quote unquote smaller games, which, and I don't even want to call this a smaller game because it's, it's packed to the brim with love, care, like all the different combat things you can do, the different levels. Like I know maybe it's not triple A, right? As, well, as this, people this is talk it, about, Roland. this is it. It's like, it's not a smaller game, but it's a game where you can just 
feel how people would have spun it in a negative light. Sure. Like, like you don't, I don't even know what to call that kind of game. But you can just kind of I see that. I would call this people... game like double double A plus is probably like the right terminology for it. Yeah, maybe. Right. But I, I was saying like, because I don't even know if you mentioned this, Jeff, or maybe it was Jez, but like if Microsoft had done the typical marketing for this, where they revealed this trailer a year ago, right? People would have been yes. like, oh, what is this thing? What is it really? You yep. would have, it would have been, it would have been a nightmare. It would, but like, because it shadow dropped and people got to play it immediately because of game pass. And then you have millions of people basically becoming viral marketers for the game because everybody's talking about it and how good it is. I was thinking of like other Xbox games in the future. Cause I think they get the data now. Okay. How did this do? How many people mm-hmm. are downloading it? How many people are subscribing to game pass? How many people are buying it on steam? And I think they can do it again in the future. I'm not saying they'll do it the next developer direct, but I think they right. probably could do it again. They and I guess, will. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the thing I wanted to ask you, cause I, I've talked to Jez about this, but like, I got to come to you, the source, right? Sure. You were the first person to talk about coalitions, new IP, right? Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to that because we know, well, we presumably know they're working on gear six. Mm-hmm. And even still, that seems like it's a little bit further away. Right, Definitely. our friend, your your great friend, special Nick, talk, talked recently <laughs> about the Gears collection I- existing. Right, the Gears Ultimate collection, which is a collection of Gears One, Two, and Three. They're remaking an Unreal Engine Five, and I thought to myself, okay, that sort of makes sense. They're not on PC, and you would want to release that before Gear Six. It probably won't be this year. If if it exists, it won't be this year. Maybe it's twenty twenty four. Gears comes out in twenty twenty five. But I was thinking, like, does this other project from the coalition actually exists because they were working on the matrix. They were working on the matrix demo. They were, they were helping out on like with undead labs. They did the alpha point demo. So I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be cool if one developer direct you got there and it was these games like a Hellblade two and avowed or something. And it was like, Oh, and here's the next game from the coalition. And they show it off. They explain it and they drop it. I guess the question I have for you is it's been a while since you've talked about that game. Is that, does that, game still exist to your knowledge is that something that still it, you still yeah. expect to come out and is, is still being worked on before gear six yeah yeah i remember when the matrix thing happened i went back and checked on it and it was like wait is this the small thing they were working on and it was very clearly no 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 they were, they were working on a real like product game that will release as a as a new video game from the coalition for sale and so yes they're they're still working on it it was always supposed to be um uh, this year at the earliest this year so, at the earliest, uh, okay. Yes, so yeah, I, I think we might still hear about. It. I, I mean, and I honestly I think this is uh, Microsoft's strategy uh, going forward is we we need to let these bigger teams work on some smaller stuff here and there because uh, it's a, well, for one thing, it is it's it does it's more cost effective. It seems like when it's like okay, more content for Game Pass, and also it's more affordable, and these games can come out faster. Uh, also, Less in risky. the coalition, uh, well, yeah, but in the coalition's case, it's also gets you uh, uh, experience with Unreal Engine 5 before you move on to the big show uh, with, with Gear 6. Uh, but it's also, so far, it's paid off, right? We we have uh, Grounded being really well really well received. We have Pentiment being very well received in Game of the Year talks. And then we have, now we have Hi-Fi Rush. Now all these things that started underneath Microsoft, but Microsoft oversaw them and, you know, uh, uh, sort of, um, let, let, let them percolate underneath them and gave them the best chance to succeed. So clearly Microsoft adopted these things, even if they didn't start them. Some of the cases they did start them, but not all the cases. Um, and so it's, I think Microsoft sees this stuff continuing to work. And so like, yeah, we want these teams to be able to do these kinds of things, especially if it's, if it's coming from their creative side. And uh, I think that it's something that we're going to continue probably uh, seeing from, from all teams. I think the coalitions game is, it's still in the works and will come out. Yes. That gets me excited because I like Gears. I, I even dare say sometimes I love Gears. I did love Gears at one point, right? Yeah. Especially when it first came out. But they've been putting out a Gears game every, like clockwork, every three years. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, right? They need to freshen it up a little bit. Um, so when you put out their report, that got me immediately excited. I was like, man, a new IP from the Coalition? Because I've always been like, I would love to see what the Coalition could do if they were untethered from the Gears IP because Gears right. has to look a certain way. It's got to control a certain way, right? It's got to shoot a certain way. I was like, oh man, but what if they did something different? So like that gets me really pumped to, to hear from you that it's still being worked on. 
I don't think it's this year. You know, maybe maybe it's next year, but probably not. That'd be a candidate for a shadow drop, I would think. You know, because it doesn't so work for every game. It's like, by the way, boom, it's out now. Like maybe that's a way they can sort of get around that, like the double A or smaller game sort of thing, where it's like you don't analyze something for two years and yes, talk that's about the problem, it, right? Yeah, because like, like it, this happens to every game, and that's the reason. Like I, I call it puddle news, where people looked at Spider Man and like these puddles mm -hmm. don't look good anymore, and I'm freaking the hell out, everybody. I can't. There's, this game's gonna be shit now. I'm freaking out because these puddles. And then the game comes out, you play it, and everyone forgets about it. So, so, some games, Spider Man can withstand that, no problem. Spider Man's fine. They do all the marketing in the world. They started the marketing campaign for Spider Man Two uh, just this week. Like it's it's that game. You could have all the anxieties in the world about Spider Man. Spider Man's gonna be fine. Uh, some of these smaller games, the anxiety can sort of eat them alive if, if uh, it, it, like through that first week when it comes out and people like do obsess on everything they talked about before. But if you just release it and you don't give people the chance to do that, well, it's like you know the entire that, that entire period where it's like okay, we're waiting for them to get in their hands so they forget about all those anxieties. We could just jump straight to that part. And for these smaller games, that's gonna make a lot of sense. So I expect them to keep doing this. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I guess the other big question is Starfield, right? Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, Jeff. A lot of people out there, I call them the March Cabal. <laughs> they, uh, they're fans the that believe. Cabal. They're fans that believe Starfield is going to come out in March. In fact, they have a release date, three twenty three twenty three. They believe mm -hmm. that there's going to be a Super Bowl ad for Starfield. Uh, this, Microsoft yes. will put out right. Which hey, if it's coming out, great. I, I would rather. I mean. Personally, I'd rather them release it when they think it's 100% ready to roll. Definitely. Um, you know, so th the question is, what do you think's going on with Starfield? I know there's been a lot of back and forth about will it come before June? Will it be after? Uh, what's really going on? Because Todd talked about, hey, we could have maybe done it on 11, 11, 22, whatever. You know, there's even, I saw something on Reset Air from a guy that pre predicted or was told about the Hi-Fi Rush early. And then he went on to say like, Azure is losing a ton of money, and uh, they need Starfield out by June to that help negate that. So right? wild. First right? of all, it's not Azure is not losing money, right? I think then the new the new earnings came out, and yeah. intelligent cloud computing was like the one thing that was growing for them, right? So, yeah. uh, and also the idea that video games could ever patch the money ma they make from cloud is right? insane, an insane thing to suggest. Just no sense to that at all. And, and, and the idea they're like, oh, Saudi and Adele be like, we're losing money. Everyone freak out on these other departments Release and make four, now. <laughs> make four decisions. No, that's not happening, I promise you. I don't yes. know if it's coming out in March. I really don't think it is. But like, if that's the reasoning, I could tell you that no, that's not what's happening. Well, so what do you, so when, when do you think we'll see this standalone showcase? And when do you think Starfield will actually come out? Because I'm. For a while, Jez has been like, there's no chance this releases before October, or basically before September, October time frame. Wait, what? Well, suddenly, you said Not this. Not what said I this. said. Well, no, hold on. I didn't finish. Then you suddenly did a 180 last oh, week okay, or the week okay. before, and you were like, I think it'll launch before the end of June, right? <laughs> I've talked to some people, and those people were telling me, hey, uh, I'm hearing there's a slight delay on Starfield. Maybe comes July, August, September. But then I talk to the same people again, and they're like, I don't know. Now I'm hearing it might actually be June. So it seems the conversation, or at least the info about Starfield, is a little bit fluid. What What do you think's going on? Yeah, I, I think they don't know still. I, I think that's why you're hearing so many different things. My money right now is on June. Uh, that's mm -hmm. it. But it's I don't, I mean. I'm, but you don't I'm feel confident about definitely that. Definitely don't feel confident, right? That's, but it's like, you know, I'm 51% confident. I would, like, if I, you forced me to make a bet, that's where my money would go. So now. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, June, like, there is a part of me that likes to see more an aggressive Xbox. So there is a part of me that's like, you know what you should do? You should release Starfield on the same day Final Fantasy 16 comes out. Give a middle <laughs> finger to Square Enix, right? Yeah, I because, like that. Because, let's be honest, Final Fantasy 16 might be the more hype. I, I don't know if I would say more hype game, but I guarantee you Starfield will dwarf it when that releases, simply because it's on Game Pass, it's on Xbox, and it's on PC and Steam. Yeah, Final Fantasy 16 is just on the PlayStation Five, right? Yes. So right. you want to send a message? We... To, you want to send a message to Square? There you go. Same day, give them wow. the middle finger, right? That's, da that's dark run shit right there, man. Well, <laughs> but then there's also like I, I think of June, and I'm like, 
Diablo 4 is right there. Yes. And game of the year. I'm not saying they're similar games, yeah. but they're also long games. And there's a possibility, Jeff, that Microsoft might own Diablo by the time that game comes out. I might actually have that game for Game Pass. So yes. it's like, I, what do you do, right? Yeah, I, I know. But I think um, Microsoft continues to not be too worried about traffic jams in terms of the release schedule. Mm. Uh, if two games come out in the same month, then two games come out in the same month. I mean, they had no problem doing that with what was it? It was Forza and Halo, right? Those were the two that back, went back to back, basically about a, a, a nearly a month apart, but like pretty close. It was like a week Never, apart. It was, the, it was a week. Of, it was a right? Forza, the Forza release, and then the week later it was the Halo multiplayer. That's right. That's the right. The mentality so with Starfield has to be with regards to its tail. Like it's going to have a long tail, and it's always going to be in Game Pass. It's like a permanent value add for Game Pass. So right. So it's like Jeff you can't. Th- I don't. Don't overthink the launch too much. If you have multiple games come out the same month, it is at the end of the day not a bad thing for Game Pass to have multiple games come out True. the same month because it's. Oh, oh, these games are going to chew each other's launch apart. Well, no, that's just two reasons to get Game Pass that month instead. It's a completely different incentive structure. And I think they they know that. They're not really thinking in those terms because they haven't had many months where they've had two games coming out or one game, let alone two games. But um, that's happening more frequently. And now and now it's a possibility. I think they're looking at me like we can't freak out and change the change things around too much because we have multiple games coming out sometimes that's going to happen and we're just going to have to roll with it and we're going to have to say yeah you're going to have to choose that's that's how flush we over here at game pass uh sometimes you're going to choose between a diablo and a and and a um a starfield yeah so if you if you would guess or if you were microsoft or whatever do you think this starfield showcase comes before e3 yeah 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 i i think if we're we get to E3 and we haven't heard about Starfield. Uh, what happened? Like, like, guys, what's going on here? But um, I think I think we probably get one. I, I think probably around March. March, yeah, April. That sounds right. Yeah, but yeah, March, April. Yeah. Would you agree that if when you do the showcase, you have to give the release date? Yes. You can't. You can't skimp on it like you did Forza. Yes. Yeah, okay. I think you have to. Because that, that was the thing. Last time they talk about Starfield, they have to they have to give the date, and it, it has to be locked, and it can't. And, and, and that's why maybe we, maybe we do go sometime without hearing about it, because I think the next time we hear the date, that is the date, and nothing is ever changing again. Like they are, if they say a date, they're going to launch it on that day, kind of no matter what. So maybe yeah. they don't say a date until they're one hundred percent certain. Um. So that brings. So they also announced that they were going to be at the summer showcase. Um. Yes, they didn't and, say three. Yeah, I, we have a question here that uh, Steven wrote in. He's like, he wants to know what games do we think will have a realistic chance of seeing at Xbox's E3 show this year? And he mentions, surely uh, Hellblade 2 and Avowed and Compulsion's new game has to be there, including like, you know, Indiana Jones uh, from Machine Games and stuff. So what do you expect to see from Microsoft, Xbox Game Studios and Bethesda? Because Bethesda's bringing it this year. Like they 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 put their base, they put their dick on the table and it was like, we're basically carrying Xbox on our back in 2023. Yep. Starfield, Redfall, Hi-Fi Rush, uh, the, the Ghostwire Tokyo port. Uh, when is Xbox Game Studios going to show up? So what do, you, what do you think their E3 is going to show? What What is ready? Because you put an article about two years ago, I believe, yeah, about... I was just going to reference that, yeah. About the games that Microsoft was... Because proje- I, I, I don't... Like, when I told you before the show that you're one of the guys I, I truly pay attention to in the games industry because i appreciate your your your, your i really do like i even like remember the articles you've written and stuff you've said uh because i Isn't think you're incredibly smart <laughs> well because all you who got is code names who was that yeah sorry i was <laughs> someone was talking there I was, I was trying to hear you rand excuse me <laughs> <laughs> um because because i think in that report you said uh, and they were targeting like Fable for 2023. Yeah, I, I have the list like, of games. I can just yeah. go over it. Yeah, yeah so go over, the, yeah, yeah. This was 2021, and these were the games on the whiteboard. These are the games penciled in for 2023 at that time. So don't like people got to keep that in mind. But this is a 2021. This is what they expected for this year: Avowed, Fable, Perfect Dark, Everwild, Hellblade <laughs> 2, Contraband, In Exile's next game, Compulsion's next game. And the coalition's next non-gears project. You, now we know for sure 
some of those are probably not coming out to like 2025 2026 if yeah. at all like i don't know why. if any of those come out this year to be honest with exactly. you. exactly well the one the one i feel somewhat and that's a very shaky somewhat confident about is hellblade 2 but mm. i can that's why wouldn't that just go especially if you have starfield like you know slipping into late this year and you have a couple other ones you give these games extra time hellblade 2 can come out at any point and it'll be fine but that's the one i think maybe could come out this holiday maybe what about uh, Jez's Project Belfry, a.k.a. The Wandering Tower from Stoic? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, that... I think that's one that could pop, pop up at any point. Um, I think that's likely. Whatever happened to the Wu-Tang game? Yeah, what happened Jez? to the Wu-Tang? Which, which one of you two leaked both that? Both of us. Which, both of us. Both of you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We both had different sides of it. Yes, we both confirmed it, basically. Yeah. Yeah, Brass Lion uh, Entertainment. I um, I don't know. I haven't heard much about yeah, that Yeah, me neither. A while. I haven't, yeah. same here. I haven't heard much, so... I want to presume we'll that it's still it's still trucking along, hopefully, because it sounded pretty cool. Yeah. Man. And if they bought the licenses and stuff, you you want to assume that it's still coming, right? I guess I that's so. just um, hi they said Hi-Fi Rush is in development for three years, right? And, yeah, um, just like twenty seven. Well, no, they said they well, start they, started he said in twenty seventeen. He said he pitched, pitched it twenty seventeen, yeah, but I doubt they was. started it. That's yeah. right. Yes, that's probably right. So, it's so kind who of knows like, if it um, started? I uh yeah I suppose I mean it's every every de development timeline is different right maybe maybe Jeff leaked it way too early damn you Jeff how could you do oh, that? wow like so, you leaking uh, project oh like you God, leaking project the dragon bus. like <laughs> Je you know you know what's what? funny though Jeff what? Jeff is that Jez will tell me the stuff he has and then he'll be like I'm gonna leak this like for instance he leaked the freaking developer direct two days before Microsoft was gonna announce it. Jeff, you Microsoft don't understand how often, how, how often I argue with him not to leak things. Like, <laughs> don't. I'm the good angel on his shoulder. I'm like, mm -hmm. don't do this. Don't leak this. He, he leaked Project Dragon, and we knew Project Dragon wasn't going to come until 25, uh, 2025, 2026. Mm -hmm. well, and I was like, what are you uh, doing leaking this now? It's 2021. It's five years away. I have leaked that themselves on their own website. And Microsoft also, I think that's, also um, leaked that's, developer direct themselves on their own website, which that's like an interesting one though, because that like helps explain like where where Microsoft was lo looking for help. I, I, any leak that I think illuminates what's going on in the industry, I think is uh, defensible. So that's Jazz's leaks. So he usually mm. leaks ones that like help us understand what these companies are thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That's okay. right. Je Jeff's completely right. That's exactly why I do it. That's exactly right. Yeah, one hundred percent. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm Don't providing this, I'm this holiday. Essential that's service. what I think. Yeah, providing essential <laughs> service to the people. Um, That's right. You know, what, power to what, the power to yeah. the players. While, while we're on the topic of leaks, Jeff, there's yeah, been sure. there's been like there's been like backlash to leaks. Ooh, I feel yeah, like, there in has the last been. few months. I want. Yeah. I want to know. Yeah, I, mean, I want to know your thoughts on it. What, what are your thoughts on on leaks? My thoughts are that that's fair. That's fair. If you have, if you have criticisms of leaks, that's fair. That's but, fine. I'm just doing my job. I am just doing my job, and people do their own jobs all the time, and people don't like it, what the, the pro byproduct of those jobs are. It happens all the time. Uh, I, I, that happens with the things I criticize. People make a game, and I, they'll put it out, and I'll say bad things about it. So if I do my job and people want to say crit critical things of it, that is completely fair. And I'm going to keep – I'm most likely going to keep doing it because there's an audience for it, and that audience keeps showing up, and that's a valuable thing to the people who give me money. And so I'm I'm gonna keep doing it. If you don't want it, I'm I'm I, I I don't apologize, but I do understand. Especially if you're a developer working on these games, I understand and I feel bad a lot of times. But I, I'm I'm providing the service to people. I am, and they want it, and I, and I'm doing my job. And that's it's kind of that simple. Well, you know, yeah. if you're listening to like places like Reset Era, they they're always telling me that you're just a fraud, though. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, listen, you never you, get anything you, right. A broken clock is right about twenty three <laughs> times a day. <laughs> yeah, remember I well, why did why did Nick <laughs> pop into my head there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Nick's gonna come Nick come for you when the Gears Collection is announced and when Platinum announces yeah. they're doing Scalebound with Xbox. What do you think about that, Jeff? What do you think about Scalebound and Xbox? Are they gonna? Oh, is that no. really Brian, Jeff is you know? Like, you I'm couldn't just resist. Asking. You couldn't resist. We I we almost had every... one podcast without Scalebound. I do I not think about Scalebound. How about that? Do, do uh, there you go. Think Okay. <laughs> do not think about it. You ask what I think about it. I don't. Yeah, nobody thinks about Scalebound apparently. Wow. Uh, so I guess. Uh, so what games do you think? I mean, I, you, you mentioned okay, Hellblade Two, maybe this holiday, maybe Starfield, Forza Motorsport, maybe Project Belfry. They might have Call of Duty because there's supposed to be a new Call of Duty game or an expansion no, or whatever. 
expansion, no, not a, not a new Call of Duty, but like a, right, an expansion but, that'll be so big that I put they put I bet they put out a new box for Call yeah, of Duty. Yeah, they, they probably do. Yes. But I guess I guess like people want to know, do you think Microsoft does the twelve month thing again, or do they do a regular one? And, and what games do you? Because like there's so many games. Like it's got to be yeah. working on something. Zenimax Online's got to be working on something. Where's Compulsion's game? What about an update on State of K three? What's going on with Everwild? Seems like that they, they they're tweeting about it more. Like, do you have like in your opinion? Like, what do you think we'll see at this year's E three? Yeah, I, I think you know we will not get another twelve month one. I think especially yeah. if Starfield and Forza both slip out of that twelve month period, it's like, well, what are you? What are we even pretending for any anymore? You're gonna say that we're not gonna believe you this time. Um, you know, fool me once and all that stuff. Um, also, you're right. That that time frame really benefited them last month, last year, when they were looking at these games that were really massive and ones that they had to get out first before they could really talk about anything else. Once once we're at a point where we know what's happening with Starfield, and, and we have the, the, these other games out of the way, uh, Redfall, then we can go into the C3, and the C3 better be like, well, here's updates on things coming. From, that we've talked about before uh, a lot of updates they probably won't talk about every single one they probably won't talk about perfect dark and mm. maybe not about fable things like that uh but uh, avowed um hellblade 2 uh, maybe uh, contraband uh oops, again it's probably also still a little bit far away um but then i think they will also say okay and here's in exile's next game that's coming pretty soon and here's compulsion's game that's coming pretty soon and here's the coalition's new non-gears game and that's coming pretty soon so I think they will have a lot of stuff. I, mean, I I just think they will also give updates about games that are coming in late 2023, uh, or I'm sorry, late 2024 and beyond as well. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I think the 12-month thing in, ret- in, in hindsight was a mistake. Um, because I, I, it, it fit their about purposes contraband. in the moment. Sorry, go on. I, it, I, that's all I had to say is that it fit their purposes in the moment and yeah. that, that those same circumstances won't be the circumstances every year going forward. True, true. But... I, I, I say it's a mistake now with hindsight because every like they said expect these games and uh, granted I, I know it's not a, a contract written in blood things happen but Microsoft's the one who set expectations that their games would be out by the end of June yep. so it looks like if Starfield were to get pushed people would like oh it got delayed a second time when if they didn't do the 12 month thing people wouldn't be expecting Starfield to release before June they would just be like when Starfield coming and be like whenever Bethesda tells us it's ready. But yep. now, because they, they put the limitations on themselves, they're like, well, Forza's now delayed, and Starfield's delayed. Our History Untold was on their game that was, was at the showcase. I doubt that comes out this first half of the year, right? So I, I just hope yep. we don't see that again, and they go back to the typical, like, they don't necessarily need to announce stuff five years away, but it's like, here's stuff coming next well, they year. Are, they here's already have two years multiple games yeah. that are the, multiple years away. We need updates on all of those. So let's not, like... Let's not do the 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 twelve month thing again, just so we can actually lay out a game plan for all the previously announced stuff. Like I said, like there's going to be a, quite some time before we get to a point where they have more games to announce than they have already announced. So yeah. let's just clear the board first and and sort of reassess things after you have a multiple like hits from that library of games that have been announced. And, and and don't put any limitations on your ability to talk about those games. Now I understand the limitations exist in the form of developers taking their time to create assets for shows is a massive strain it's a more of a strain than it's ever been uh i was uh, asking developers like okay you, you send the things off for a, cin- a, a cinematic trailer for a not side studio that's got that's not too much work like no that's four to five months of work on our part and so what the hell like that alone is four to five months of work we're not even talking about in-game trailers uh gameplay showcases anything like that no in an out of game cinematic trailer done by a completely different studio four to five months worth of work for most of the people working on these games they do not have the time anymore for games that take five to six years to complete to do that every year no way that's not going to happen so that's why we go years multiple years without hearing about stuff from perfect dark and all these things and so i think we're probably going to go another year where we don't hear from most of those games but at least give us an updates on, on a key a, a key few maybe give us v- like verbal updates on one or two of the important ones and then the rest of the stuff could just be big announcements about stuff that is coming soon yeah um, I guess the other sort of big thing that's going on in the Xbox world is everything that happened with Halo and 343. A um, lot of rumors flying around uh, about 343, if they're just going to be, a, a, what what was it, a publisher, Jazz, basically? Kind of like like World's Edge. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, that's... like IGN talked about it, but then they came out with that 
that statement, be like, Master Chief and Halo is here to stay, blah, yep. blah, 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 all this stuff. Phil talked about it in the mo- most recent interview, but it was v- typical Phil answer, mostly vague platitudes. Right, where, where anything could be true, yeah. And, yeah, so, so what, what's your take? Are you hear anything about the 343 situation and, and really Halo wanna... and all that stuff? I really want to compare notes with Jeff about this, if Jeff's been investigating it. Yeah, I've, I've been looking around a little bit, but I have not, like, dived too close because I was kind of, like, waiting for the, some of the dust to settle because it seemed like they were still um, – figured still some stuff out after the layoffs. Uh, yeah. But my, my my hunch here is that uh, there is some truth to the idea that 343 is a reassessing how they are approaching making Halo games, the single-player games going forward. They already do that for the multiplayer games, right? They bring in a lot of help from the outside, certain affinity being prime among them, but there's a lot of development teams that come in and help them with multiplayer stuff. Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they uh, apply more of that way of doing things to the single player games going forward. I, but I also, I, I still think like 343's name is going to be on the box. It's still going to be a 343 game. Uh, yeah, so b- both things are true. 343 and Halo and Master Chief are here to stay, yes. And 343 is rethinking how they're doing their single-player games, Halo games. Yes, I, I think both are true. You think both can be true. What, uh, you hear anything about the Halo Battle Royale from Certain Affinity that's been often rumored? Uh, just what everyone else has been hearing, that, that, that it's in the works and that we can expect it at some point. But, you know, I, I don't know. It, I always heard, you know, like, 2023 we'll hear more, but that always felt like a placeholder, so I don't really know. Yeah. What, what would you personally like to see from Halo? essentially like what would be jeff scrub you know jeff grubs like if if they came to you and were like what what do you want halo to be what what would you pitch to them yes yeah, this, this is the rough thing because i really liked infinite and uh the big the, the big problems with infinite is just that when you didn't have the content people started feeling sour about it and then things just spiraled from there and then everyone just felt started feeling miserable about halo so you didn't want to bring it up to the to your friends like I, hey i still am having fun with this multiplayer well, no one wants to go back to that. And it's like, well, what do you even do about that? Obviously, you need more content. So my, my pitch would be like, hey, if you need to move to Unreal to, to have a pipeline and to be able to bring in any developer and be able to plug them in to work on something that they're familiar with so you can get enough content in, you need to do that. You need to just make that happen. You need to just cut everything else off and get to that point where you can just have the content coming out at a rapid pace if that's really the only thing holding you back because you got everything else right the game feels great uh the campaign i know some people don't like the campaign i really like the campaign up until those last corridors mm, um yeah. but like everything was everything where i was moving around with master chief this giant fat spider-man ruled it was so <laughs> much fun give, give me more of that give me more to do in that world for sure next time but I, I thought that was the promise and now we're sitting around going well there won't be anything more in that world and uh, and they're like rethinking how they're doing single player stuff entirely. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. I don't know them. I don't know what you need to do. Cause I thought infinite was a pretty good answer. Uh, it just was half the answer. You needed to add more on top of that. And now we're not even going to be doing that anymore. So yeah, I, I, it's, it's a tough space for them to be in with halo. Yeah. There yeah. Was, halo. Um, that whole survey that leaked um, from Microsoft research that Microsoft posted confidentially with uh, some halo influencers. And the question was, are you done with halo infinite? which it's, it's seemed like a very definitive assessment of whether or not they're even going to continue adding to the multiplayer and stuff. So, well, I, even, just I mean, pivot to something new entirely. The games as a service market is so saturated. You're competing with these juggernauts. I, I saw a report from Tom Henderson today that Rumbleverse is going to get delisted soon. Yes. Um, I don't even know what that is. Until it's like a, cancel. it's a, it's, it's a, a melee it's a wrestling, brawler. Yeah. yeah wrestling it's a melee battle brawler. Royale. Yeah, which and oh, it's only really? been it's only been out for six months, and it was I played it when it first came out. It's it good. was enjoyable. Yeah, no, nothing. There's nothing wrong with the game. In no. fact, it's it's almost too good for fighting game fans, and that's why maybe it didn't succeed because it's like casuals go in there, and then the fighting game community was dominating it, and so it's like you had to like learn there was this this uh, uh, skill ceiling or like this really high skill ceiling, and people were kind of getting their butt whooped, and it's like oh man you kind of can't make these games too good or else they won't work for a wider audience. It's like, that's kind of a nightmare for this space. But I mean, you're right. The, the, the uh, games as a service space is saturated, but that doesn't mean the answer is not games as a service because all those other games are still competing with this saturated market because that's it's all taking up time. So it's not like, well, we go make a, a smaller games uh, games of product. Well, you can't make them small. They have to be huge to be able to get uh, attention and feel like they're worthy of being $60, $70. And then you're going to make them as a product, so they're going to sell for a little bit, and then you're going to be uh, competing with your own game, selling on the used market or whatever, 
Uh, it, no, well, the, they're still going to try to make live service games work because that's still the answer, even if the market is saturated. It's just crazy because I was six months and you're shutting it down. That's oh, we, we have some breaking news, by the way. Apparently, oh, MLB man. the Show 2023 yeah. coming to Game Pass on day one, which is, is a surprise. Third year yeah. in a row, right? MLB yeah. MLB likes it a lot. Apparently, they like uh, that money. The Xbox, I guess, uh, posted the MLB 23 cover athlete reveal uh, video on YouTube. And in the description, it says, On March 28th, 2023, play MLB The Show on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and with the Xbox Game Pass on day one. So MLB <laughs> must be liking the money they're getting from that, at least. I and think it, so. And I, it, I know it still was selling well in MPDs. I think it was top 10 for the MPDs, still even like full sales-wise, and it's packed yep. with microtransactions, so... Is it a good game? Is it, uh, is it a good game? Yeah, I never really played them. Yeah, yeah, that, that's very good. Yes. It, yeah. It, it, Base, baseball fan. If you're a baseball it. fan, yeah. If you're a baseball fan, yes. um, we have a question from Jacqueline. He says uh, he wants to. Joaquin. He wants to talk His about name's Joaquin. Joaquin. Uh, I always screw it up. I I, I have a terrible <laughs> speaking problem. I'm sorry. He wants us to talk about the Xbox financials and if it's as dire as people think. What do you? What do you think, uh, Jeff? Because they said 12% down hardware, which oh, isn't really the, good for November, the November, December time frame, and 12% down for you know the content and services, and they're still projecting a decline for this quarter, and you know they haven't given an update on Game Pass numbers. And what do you think about the whole financial situation? Yeah, I, I get people looking at that, and I mean it's not great, but it's also in line with expectations because they knew that um, the previous year was kind of an outlier a little bit. Uh, but also, like, I don't know, every Xbox Series X that they're making is selling, right? And um, Xbox Series S continues to perform pretty well uh, worldwide. I'm pretty sure if you compare, if you line up the start of the generation for Xbox Series X and S, and you line it up with Xbox One and Xbox 360, it is the fastest selling Xbox so far. Um, so I think they're doing well. Their services are, are continue to grow. They say the one bright spot is like game pass does continue to grow. It's not, obviously it's not growing as fast as they wanted to, but also they have really high targets they for those things. Anything that, for it. Come on. That? It's like, they haven't released any of their big games for the service yet. You know, exactly. It's like, right. So, so that, and that's the whole thing. It's like, it was growing even without those big games. So should, we should probably expect that once those big games come, that it, it really will pop off. At least that's my expectation. Doesn't this we'll seem see. like, like, this is the year, though. Like, okay, you start off with Hi-Fi Rush Shadow Drop. You got GoldenEye, bleh, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you got <laughs> Age of Empires 2. That's not very which nice. Is Age of Empires 2, first time on console, reviewing pretty well. But then you get, um, you, you go to February, you got Atomic Heart. You go to March, you got Wo Long. You even got Ghostwire Tokyo, as well as MLB The Show. April's got Minecraft Legends. May's got Redfall. June, right now, doesn't have anything. Maybe Starfield launches then. Maybe Diablo's owned by then. But... You know, if, if Forza at one point later in this year, maybe a Hellblade 2, maybe, maybe a product Brelfry, who else knows? Does it seem like this is the year for Game Pass to really grow and get yes. and get more and more? It seems, doesn't it seem like that? Yes. I mean, I think you're, you know, we're coming off uh, the, the layoff news and those reports out of 343 and uh, Phil Spencer putting his foot in his mouth at that one thing where he said yeah. some weird stuff about cancellation. I, I, I watched you. I watched your thing there. You made some interesting points. I just think if he was trying to say something different, he should have said the different you thing. He should have but, said the but, word uh, harassment instead harassment of Harassment and toxicity. That's, we know yeah. what you mean by that. that I think yeah. that's what he meant. He should have said that then. But whatever. There was like a lot of reasons to be pretty down on Xbox yes. a week ago, a week and a half ago. And now we're coming off like, okay, the Xbox Developer Showcase, uh, Developer Direct was competent. Hi-Fi Rush is beyond competent. It's a really well-made game that is really hitting on all cylinders. Gives you a lot to be excited about. I mean, it's a $30 game. You want to buy it, you can buy it. But it's like, well, no, I'm feeling pretty good about Game Pass overall. There, are, there is stuff coming. Let's give it a shot. I want to I roll the dice on Minecraft Legends and, and Redfall. And then if we get, if, if, the, if that stuff carries us to E3 and we get Starfield whenever we get Starfield, E3 could be this chance to be like, all right, you've had Game Pass this entire year. Maybe some of you have had it for multiple years, half a decade now. Uh, here's, here's where it's really going to pay off for you because look at all this stuff going forward and you, you look at a look at a recent track record of really re releasing really good games well now it's it's all that's coming home to roost right now and i think that they have a really good chance of just yes skyrocketing in terms of success for game pass now they, they, they've said that they don't need to game pass to skyrocket i think part of that is um 
uh, positioning with the Activision thing, where yeah. uh, the FTC keeps trying to say, hey, the, the, the subscriptions and cloud are a different market than buying games, which of course they're not, but especially, they're really, obviously, especially not if it's just 15% of this overall business that Microsoft is, is doing with games. And if Microsoft says, well, it continues to only, it's only ever going to be 15%, uh, well, then, then it's definitely not ever going to be a, a different market. I think that's, they're kind of playing a little bit there, but we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll know really quickly. I think it's going to be pretty obvious if we get to the end of this year and it already felt like everyone was talking about Game Pass, but now everyone is talking about Game Pass sort of nonstop. Yeah, we'll know. We'll know yeah. real fast. Yeah. Age of Empires just see... hit 87 on Metacritic as well for Xbox. So that's another yeah, Empire Survivors. Wait, wait, what, was, what was the game? Age of Empires. Oh, Age of Empires, right. Yes. For um, Xbox. Yes. That, I'm, I'm surprised how well that's working on PC or, or on Xbox, according to people. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I've been playing it for the last couple of days. I'm... I am stunned how intuitive the controls are. I really am. But it's, it's Oh yeah, uh, that's that's another another game. Age of Empires 4 is supposed to come to Xbox later this year. That's oh, yeah. probably yeah, a fall yeah, game yeah. as well. I totally forgot about that. Yep, definitely will be. Which I mean, I'm I'm very much of the opinion I've said this before, but like the idea of like play the games you want where you want with the people you want. Like I don't really care about RTSs, but I felt like Age of Empires 4, if you're going to launch that game, if you're going to launch a PC game, you also should launch it on Xbox because all the Xbox games are on PC, right? Like, our history untold should also be launching on Xbox when it launches on PC. That definitely should mm-hmm. be because, you know, so save, save and turn based, you know, 4X strategy games, they, they have an install base on console already. I mean, I can at least appreciate it with Age of Empires to some degree because for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, they've not only like reworked the controls. But they've added like extra layers of AI to reduce the amount of micromanaging you have to do over the villages, which I'm pretty sure the PC version doesn't have. So I can appreciate that there was some probably extra development time, a significant amount of extra development time there, but that should have been factored into Age of Empires 4. But maybe they needed to develop new ideas about making these games work on console. I'd rather they get it right, you know, than. Yeah. Don't have them launch at the same time, but maybe like if they do an Age of Mythology um, remake, which I think I've, I think they've announced that, or have I just leaked it? Right, didn't remember. they? So we were just like, I think we were, we were okay, good, yeah. Remember, it, we were it, Age, that, it was a yeah. uh, Age of Mythology retold, I believe it's called. Yeah, okay. Uh, they did that during the big event. Uh, we mentioned earlier Redfall. Um, I, I I did listen to your thoughts on it. Um, but you know, uh, can you expound on any, uh, of, you know, what you th- saw of the, sh- cause you were like, kind of one is like, I don't know, but then it's like, it's an arcane game. Maybe it's like something I actually need to get my hands on to really truly get what they're yes. going with, with Redfall. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think I feel that way about just about all games these days, but, uh, definitely this one, I'm looking at it like, okay, I, I get it, but uh, I think I need to play it to know if, if all the pieces are coming together. Cause you see how they're, what they're trying to do. They, um, they have this uh, uh, vibrant, uh, undead a- a- aesthetic that they have, and that that can I think a lot of people are seeing that and like, oh, that can feel like Left 4 Dead. I, I get why people make that comparison. But then you look at the gameplay, and it is very Far Cry. And then they do have the vampires nest, which are procedurally generated. Again, that feels Left 4 Dead, but there's a very small part of the game. Um, uh, okay, yeah, all these pieces can can obviously be put together to make a good game. Is it? I don't know. I have to play it. Um, but based, based on what they're showing me, I'm at least very curious, very interested. And then the hope is, is that, um, yeah, it is like those games. But then on top of that are all these excellent arcane systems that that come together to really just be like, oh, here's uh, all these different ways you can interact with anything. And when you do interact with anything, it, all, it has all these unforeseen consequences that are really fun to deal with. That's the hope. I really, I really kind of uh, I'm looking forward to that being the the case. We'll have to see if that's actually how it plays out, though. Right. Um, I guess out of all the Xbox games that are known and announced, what is the one that you're looking forward to the most? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's it probably is just Starfield, but Starfield's like probably my most anticipated game, other than Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I think that. I have always really had a, a strong time, a strong relationship with uh, with Bethesda Game Studios games, where um, I don't think I've I think I finished Fallout Four, uh, but I don't think I finished any of the other ones, and yet uh, that doesn't matter because that's not why I go into those. What did I go into those games for? The fact that there is all of this story happening in the background that I'm ignoring is like part of my character's story of. <laughs> and yet I'm going to go out and look for all these other things that are going on and create my own fun and then get mods and create even more fun on top of that. Um, and the, these things being sandboxes where I can 
have my own emergent narratives pop up is so crucial to me. And if they can do that in space, which is something I always was hoping from um, uh, the outer worlds from uh, uh, from Obsidian, where it's like, yeah, that they they're going in that direction. But this isn't like a real full sandbox. This is a, an RPG. It's it's a, it's a story RPG. Um, and and I, I kind of want to get back to the Bethesda, anything can happen. You could pick up all the wheels of the cheese in the universe and put them all over your spaceship. Give me that. And uh, if they can get close to delivering on that, I, it's kind of little doubt that it'll be my most, maybe it won't be my favorite game of the year, but I think it'll be the game I play the most for the next 10 years. Wow, that is, next 10 years, that's <laughs> that's pretty high. Like, I, I mean, that's, I that's couldn't... what Skyrim was. That's what, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. Skyrim was. I mean, that's, you know. they know that. They look at the numbers, they know that their games are played for that long. And that's, I think they're building this game with that in mind. Now, that's what gives me a little bit of pause. Like, hey, when you are thinking about a game, excuse me, in those in those terms, does that like mess up like how you approach everything? Because you're like, oh, will this be something that people like nine years from now care about? I don't, I don't know if you could think about games that way. You have to sort of just make immediate decisions. Uh, so I hope that they aren't like talking themselves out of like good ideas or uh, sort of uh, getting gun shy because they're thinking about that long-term support for the game. But, you know, that's that could be puddle news. That could be anxiousness over over nothing. We'll see. I've kind of yeah. had the impression that that's the reason for the blank planets, the procedurally generated planets. I, I've got yeah. this theory that they want players to go out and fill in the blanks. And they'll have like a traditional Bethesda game there on specific planets. And then all these procedurally extra ones, they'll be like, you know, they'll, they'll have companies building entire expansions on, on XYZ planet, probably. That's my theory. I think that's. I, I, I think that's one of the reasons that they did it. Yeah, for sure. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I'll never get that criticism because it's the easiest thing in the world. If you see a planet that's dead and you don't want to go to it, don't don't go to it. Yeah. <laughs> just don't. Just is... Don't go to it. If you see, if you see an empty alley in the street and you're like, well, someone should get rid of this empty alley on the street. Like, no, just don't go down it. Just like just keep walking. I don't get it. <laughs> so yeah, this is the. Um... The reason Rand was so shocked when you said you'd be playing it for ten years is because Rand only plays trending games. No. Oh well, yeah, he's the uh, he's the trending gamer, right? Jeff yeah, Keighley's trending gamer. He's the trending gamer. Or you were yeah, trying to go for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that well, that's what it is. Rand wants the trending gamer award from. No, I, I, <laughs> I I don't. I'm I'm a someone who plays one game and then moves on to the next. And the only time I really get in, like really stuck in a game is when it's a multiplayer game my group loves, like PUBG. Never experienced the battle royale before, and all of us. We're just so enamored with it. We played it for like 900 hours. Yeah, it's right? a good game. Yep. Um, even though we, we've tried going back now and we just can't, right? And nope, we played you can't Warzone. Go back home again. Yeah, Warzone, we played for 250. And then Warzone 2 came out, and nope, nope, we didn't play for more than 20 hours because it sucks and the changes they made yep. are horrible. What um, did they change that was so bad? I mean, almost just everything. To, just out of curiosity. Every, almost I, all the fans are saying this, though. I don't. I don't yeah. know what it is either, Jez. But I mean, all, they literally changed the it. gulag, and they changed like how items drop and you pick up, and you. They changed everything. It's just ugh, the map's also ugly. But like for me, it's like the multiplayer games that persist forever. Whereas like you know a single like a regular game, I play once. Maybe I play twice to get all the achievements, or at least I used to when I used to chase achievements. Like if, if I was playing Dead Space Remake now, if I was playing Dead, Dead Space Remake when I was going for achievements, I would play that game and only that game and do all three three playthroughs back to back to back to back. And then I would never touch Dead Space Remake ever again. Mm-hmm. I'd be done with it. You know what I mean? That That's how I've kind of always... Let me tell you about going back to a little game called Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Ooh. There's, there's something I, you can I do. I get the, the big nostalgia hits when I watch you guys play that and the, I can hear them. It's... That's like the, my first video game moment that I truly remember was seeing that game for the first time. It's probably one of the most, it's probably one of the earliest, like, memorable games. So, uh, obviously, yeah. Super Mario Brothers, Zelda, uh, there's, there's, uh, there are other memorable games. They didn't have, like, Mike Tyson's Punch had, like, had an extra chip in the cartridge that enabled them to have those really big sprites. And so they're way more expressive. And it's just, yeah, obviously, they are. Like, it's a special game because of that kind of stuff. So, about Bethesda. So, we got Starfield coming this year. We know their next game is Elder Scrolls 6. Who knows when, right? Because Jason Schreier talked about if you're building a game now, you're most likely going to take six years and you're probably thinking about the next-gen consoles already. And it's like, wow, already? Jesus. Yep. Um, so who knows when Elder Scrolls 6 comes out? And you're, you I, know, might you, have, I might have the code name for it. Oh, geez. You know, 2027, <laughs> 2028. But 
I guess the big thing is like the following. Funny that franchise. they would have a code name. I mean, obviously they do it for all their projects. It's just the idea is funny. I have a code name for a game that they announced publicly. <laughs> like, right. No, know, I mean, I mean the console, the next gen console. I might have the code names for those. Oh, okay. God, you're Whoa. disgusting. You're so disgusting, Jeez. Chaz. This, this was, if this wasn't live, <laughs> that would be sloth right now. But what do you think they're going to have to do about Fallout, Fallout, Jeff? Because Elder Scrolls is next. But yeah, 2027, 2028. Fallout's huge. It's got a new TV show coming. Could be big. But then it's like, oh, Fallout 5, 20, 33, 20. Like, they, ha they no. have to do another Fallout game before then, right? Like, yes, I know they have to. They yeah, have to. So the, answer to the answer to this problem is, is to make more Fallout. And, well, okay. Well, who's going to do that? Well, if it can't be Bethesda Game Studios, it needs to be someone else. Now, I, I, I reported this before, and this, but who knows if anything's happened here. I do think stuff's probably moving, but it's probably moving pretty slowly. Uh, th they're was talk and and like conversations like active conversations about obsidian working on a follow-up to to new vegas uh it wouldn't necessarily be new vegas 2 but it could be new vegas 2 um it's like oh okay well they're, and, you know, obsidian's very busy but maybe it's like the idea is let's get that team rock and rolling so they can get around to making that even faster than uh that's the game studios would be able to uh it's like, oh yeah I, I think that's a good idea i still think they need more happening with fallout even than that and then that's maybe when you say okay maybe in exile can make a throwback uh, mm. uh, uh kind of game like a retro a, fallout a retro fa of. fallout a top-down fallout uh just give people a little taste of something you know that's not gonna uh, satisfy everyone but as long as the other games are, are known to be coming by that point that would probably be okay um i, I it is th this is like the big issue right now with, with microsoft is like they do have like something like a fallout tv show coming and well, do you have all the games ready to go, like remade and, re and, and remastered and in one place for everyone? To, oh, okay, well, they're all on Game Pass, sure. But do you have a, a way for those people to like feel like, okay, I'm getting an updated version of that that is uh, would be worth $60, $70 in the same way that The Last of Us uh, a remake was? It's like, well, no, no, they, we don't, they don't have the capacity to do that. It's like, okay, you need to get, kind of get this stuff together because that synergy stuff really does make a difference. Everyone is taking advantage of it except for seemingly you. And when you do try to take advantage of it, boy, that Halo show comes out and just doesn't help at all. Yeah, I was it? about so, to say, I don't think the synergy helped with the Halo TV show to the Halo game, though. It <laughs> definitely, well, of course not. Yep. It I seemed agree. to help Cyberpunk, and it seemed yeah. to help League of Legends with Arcane yep. and... Uh, and The Witcher, the other, and, and the list and goes on. The Witcher, and, and everybody. Last of Us is now not only a great video game, but also uh, an amazing TV show. Yeah, Ka right? Castle Konami's going back, making more Castlevania. They're, yep. and, meanwhile, Netflix is making like three spinoffs of that Castlevania anime. Uh, that That's not a coincidence. It's, yeah, it's helping and everybody except for Microsoft. Like, but we were first in 2013. We wanted yeah. to do this. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Quantum Break TV uh, show was good. No, oh, God, I, I would love for Quantum Break to come back. Uh, we do have a, a A2S in chat. Ask Jeff if he knows anything about that spy team game registered by Bethesda. So I don't expect uh, Jeff to leak anything here, but no, so. I, I don't. But I don't know anything about that. Yeah. I, I, I like vaguely remember that this happened, and I never looked into it. Are you um, are you sitting on any leaks right now pertaining to Xbox that you just not want to share at this uh, point I, in time? If it like wouldn't be sitting on, it'd be like I'm I'm not sure for the things I've heard are real. That it's that sort of thing where I, how, I gotta look. I guess how, things. How much do you need? Like how many different sources do you need to be sort of like sure about that something's happening? Like one person tells you something, it's like eh, I don't know. But how, how many people do you usually like? All right, this seems to be happening because I've heard it from X number of people. Or I've seen a document or something. Yeah, it, it depends on the company. Uh, I have, I feel pretty good about uh, a handful of publishers and Microsoft. If I get two, and usually one of one of those sources needs to be like a certain sort of um, strong source that I know always gets things right. And, and often they're like just confirming things I've heard. But it's like, well, if that's confirmed, then that's good, and I can go with that. Um, since the Nintendo stuff, when uh, the, the the Metroid Prime thing didn't work out, and the Zelda stuff didn't work out, like that was two independent sources, and well, that wasn't good enough apparently. So with Nintendo, it'd be very different these days. But with Microsoft and Xbox, I, I have a good, pretty a good pipeline where if I can, if I hear something and they can confirm it uh, through a, a handful of primary sources, uh, then I I can go with it and know that it's it's almost certainly true, even even if things might change. Yeah, but that that the that leak about you know what you said about metro that worked in your favor because not everybody gets to see it's not just your long hair exactly. you're just, you're just yes. a good looking dude in general you could shave that that's thing right. off and you'd be that's right that that was the comment on there was like oh no he's hot which i yeah. thought, was, thought was very nice very kind of the audience to say that so 
obviously Xbox had a horrible 2022. We've talked about it at nauseas. Yep. I'm sure you talked about it. One of the reasons why is because the big story was ABK. It basically dominated their entire news cycle, made them kind of, you know, like an ostrich putting their head in the sand or a turtle going into their shell. They just didn't want to talk about anything. And I hate talking about metaphors? it. Uh, I'm, not off the top of my head. You know, I <laughs> I don't really like talking about this unless it's time to like to just laugh at Lion Jim, Lion Flying Jim dance moves, Saving Private Ryan <laughs> and the dumb things he says when he actually says stuff. Because uh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, he stopped but, saying stuff to us. You notice he's a, yeah. enjoyed the EU. He stopped going over to the games industry that biz and saying what he was thinking. Yeah, he just he just taking these midnight flights over to Brussels trying yep. to convince the. So, what do you think happens with the deal? Are you f- completely just over it? Like it seems like everybody else is at this point. Do you expect it to pass? Do you think it's going to get blocked? Uh, what's your take on on all that? Yeah, I, I'm really yeah, I'm I'm definitely over this period of it where it's uh, it's been the same story and we're just getting multiple sides for why everyone's doing what they're doing but it's like okay yeah it's interesting to hear like the ftc made its move because it heard mm-hmm. the eu was going to make a deal with microsoft and so that's wild why okay i mean i get that they feel that they they need to do this it's and this is they don't have a, a good pathway through their traditional mandate of 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 uh, of blocking this thing they don't have a strong case so they're trying all these other things to sort of run out the clock of microsoft and see if they can pressure them to give it up Microsoft's clearly clearly not going to give it up, so it, that means the fight's going to go to the end. And if that's the case, it, I think it, it once again goes back in the favor of the deal closing and Microsoft actually able to make it happen. Um, it it it'll continue to be a a, a long annoying process. Um, and if Microsoft suddenly does drop it, that'll be a big news day. Um, but I, I it, it does seem like they are hell bent on getting it through. And as far as even with all the obstacles in the way. Um, it does, there doesn't seem to be any real good reason why it wouldn't happen. Uh, not from any of the regulators. Uh, the regulators have questions, uh, but the Microsoft has an answer. It seems like for every single one of those issues and all those answers feel really well thought out and, and good point. My, my, my big thing with this is always that this is nowhere near a monopoly. The video game yeah. industry is way too dynamic. There's way it's like even you get, okay. Give all of the games that Activision has over to Microsoft. Where do you think the next billion dollar game is going to come from? It's not going to come from anywhere underneath Microsoft or Sony or Activision or any or EA or any, it's going to come from some game out of nowhere on Steam, just like it has for the last 15 to 20 years. So it, it's that's the dynamism is still there. And if we're worried about protecting things, uh, well, well, yeah, let's protect some people's jobs, make sure that people feel better about the place they're working for. Is that is Microsoft better in Activision? Maybe, maybe a smidge. So, OK, I guess we'll just go approve it. We'll see. Um, but you know, if people are worried that this is going to somehow stifle innovation, it's just not, it's not going to get anywhere close to that. And for the most part, as far as I could tell, it seems like it's only going to increase competition, but which we'll is the see. reason Sony doesn't want it to go. They don't want it right. to pass. Yes. Cause, cause, yeah. cause what is, what is Sony like today? Sony is, is fine tomorrow. If this deal goes through, they'll have to do more to compete. And it's uh, okay. Well, of course they don't want to do that. Who wants to do that? But nobody they, does. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> does. But but that's the whole point. We should be protecting that. Like, is that that, and we should be trying to uh, get rid of that urge to avoid competition. Uh, and so it's like it seems like we should probably let it go through. But that's my my position. You even I think you even talked about it before. Was like this is pro- was probably the end play for Activision anyways because they don't make any of their games besides Call of Duty. And well, they, Call of yeah. Duty may not be on the mountaintop forever. And it's like some of these. They, it's like just get bought out because it's just the video game industry. It's like, nobody wants to fund what I would call B tier games anymore is because even the B tier games take way too much money to make. So you, you're in this position where it's like the only ones who can do it essentially are the platform holders. Yeah. I mean, we talked about Microsoft's financials and Activision's financials were in a a state where, yeah, they were maintaining, maintaining, maintaining. And they're maintaining while they are basically tapping out everything Call of Duty could possibly do. They have a mobile version. They're going to come out with another mobile version. They're going to have uh, they're going to have uh, two ball- battle royales now. They're, they went back to Modern Warfare with Modern Warfare 2. They have all this stuff going, and they're maintaining at best if they're not losing money. They're not losing money, but they're slowing their growth. It's okay, so... What is the pathway toward uh, becoming a, a fast-growing company again? They don't have an answer for that. They don't know. And so when they were looking around, like, what can we do here? And in the meantime, there's all these uh, concerns about Bobby Kotick being a, a toxic asshole. 
It's like, okay, well, Mike, when Microsoft shows up and says, hey, wait, do, do you want to make something happen? The answer is a definite, definite yes. So they can cash out at the basically the height of, of, of their value, essentially, uh, and, and then call it a day. Uh, as it is, if this deal doesn't go through, they're, it's not like it's game over for them or anything like that, but they're going to have a long, arduous path towards becoming a growing company again. And I, there's no clear path for them to make that happen. Yeah. But then you have to wonder what's what's after it for Xbox in particular and just in the industry. Like, we saw the reports about Ubisoft, and I read your tweets live on Xbox too because you had the best take. It was just like, yo, I think they tried selling themselves to people recently, and they pretty much got laughed at, right? Ubisoft's got Ubisoft? all these problems. Yes. Um, well, who do you think is the next publisher to get swallowed up, whether from Xbox or from PlayStation or from Amazon? You know, there's a report earlier, I think it was last year, about... Remember EA and Amazon? Uh, yes. I think it was, but that didn't happen then. Uh, who's, who, the, who do you think is the next that, one? Hey, that that was that was real. That, that was, was real. Mm. Yes, that 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 guy got kind of raked over the coals for it, and those were those conversations were real. I think maybe all, maybe some of the details were wrong in that story, but stuff really happened there. Like, yeah, mm. didn't, um, didn't someone at Xbox tell you, Jez, that they felt Take Two would be the next one to get swallowed up? Yeah, I heard Take Two was shopping around, but man, that was back in 2020. I think things might have changed yeah. now. Um, things have changed a lot in the reality. I mean, like Square Enix always seemed like the one that's going to be. Uh, they were definitely slimming themselves down for an acquisition, maybe a merger, but probably an acquisition. And then that never happened. And then they started talking about, okay, we're going to have outside companies invest in our development studios. It's like, wait, what? That, what are you talking about? And they're they're going to own part of our studios. And that's how we're going to fund our big games going forward. It's like, that's wild. What are you talking about? Well, it's clear that they had a path. I think they had a plan to get acquired and that didn't work out. So now they have to rethink everything. Um, NFTs. So, uh, yeah. And NFTs is the answer, right? I, uh, th things are going to be different here for a little bit with the, with the unknowns of the macro economy. Um, but that does like, it, it's still, is pretty, it's a pretty smart move still to make big moves because inflation, while slowing down, is still massive, and your money's going to be worth a lot less tomorrow than it is today, and there's no guarantee that you're going to make more money tomorrow to replace that, uh, so you should probably act sooner rather than later, um, and that means I think there will probably still, there'll still be some big moves. I think it's going to be harder than ever to, to pull that off, though. So I, I would probably still point to a Square Enix, but that Square Enix is not going to go to a Sony or a Microsoft uh, they're probably going to get bought up by like a Tencent or the or, or the Saudis. Like honestly, the Saudis yeah. are going to keep buying companies, and it's going to be pretty ugly for a while. Increasingly, yeah. I wonder if Steam will eventually start looking at buying publishers, because the Steam Deck shows no sign of slowing down, and I think the Steam Deck could really challenge the traditional console market if they had. Yeah, exclusive. but they, do they want do they want to buy the cow when they get the milk for free? Like they've done such, a, a, they've done so much work to be the place where people just want to sell games that every time we've had these waves of like all these publishers are leaving to go start their own platforms. Well, all of them have come back pretty much. Right. But that's come back. EA is back. Ubisoft is back. Um, I don't know if rockstar is back, but they probably will come back, but most of them have left and now come back. And yeah. it's like, well, you did all this work to be so appealing that these companies can't ignore you. Are you really going to be like, well, now we have to, we're going to buy you so we can get this stuff. They already get 30% out of every single one of those games that they that, that get sold. And again, the next billion unit selling game is going to be some game out of nowhere on Steam. So why do you what do you need a fucking Square Enix for? They don't need that. That's a headache. That's what that yeah. is. That is true. That is true. Um, but in particular for Xbox, who do you think their targets would be? Because Phil's already talked about, hey, we're still, you know, we can't stop, right? Tencent, Sony, our competitors, Amazon. Uh, who do you think they they're looking to target after this ABK gets done? Because presumably it's like you got mobile situated. You'd even maybe make an argument even mostly consoles taken care of and Game Pass. Like you, you would maybe need to do like a specialized things. Like certain affinity, I think, is a must. If you're really yeah, in on, hey, you, you need to like get. Who, who do you think Xbox targets afterwards? Yeah, I, I mean, I do think it's something along the lines of a certain affinity. Some of these smaller studios that serve a very important need. Um, I, I, it'll probably be things that aren't very splashy. It'll be things, uh, oh, they acquired this network of support studios in Mexico, things like that. <laughs> and be like, okay, I mean, that's, that's stuff that they use all the time. And if they did that and they brought them in-house, that would go a long way towards solving some of their most recent criticisms of the company where it's like they rely too much on contract work. Well, let's just buy them and make them Microsoft Studios and everyone can go to them 
and or, or maybe they do like do something like buy some studios from Ubisoft and say, hey, these teams that you built up that have all this knowledge, maybe we can use some of this and we don't even need some of your IP. We actually just want some of your support studios. Again, not very splashy and and, and who knows what the reality of some, being able to pull off something like that is, but it's, it's, it's on the table. And of course, WB is always one that people are going to point to uh, where they have a lot of studios, a lot of very talented teams, uh, but you've seen some of the, the two key leads at Rocksteady leave, which is always the issue of buying studios and not buying IP. You know, you, people make games, not not names on a building. So if you buy Rocksteady and suddenly all the people that you bought uh, that you brought in leave to go start their own thing because they are like, hey, we shipped all these great games. Uh, give me money to start my own studio. Well, they can do that. So uh, WB is one that probably just won't happen because they won't be able to get friggin' Superman uh, and Batman uh, with with that purchase. That just won't happen. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's like, well, okay. So I guess because people always put out there like the next target Sega, the next target's Capcom, right? Yeah, Capcom you, would have made sense five years ago, yeah. Yeah, probably before Monster Hunter World pit yep. big. Do you think, I guess the question is, do you think they would be allowed? Because they're already having troubles with ABK. Granted, Sony's out here being beating the drums because like yeah. you can't live without Call of Duty. But if you were to buy, let's just say, Sega, I mean, what's Sony going to argue that they can't live without Sonic, right? Like, <laughs> well, you know, we can all live I'll without say, Sonic. Say, I can't live until Sonic is dead. That's yeah. what I'll say. Um, I well, I mean, this is the, one of the risks that Sony is running, right? And the FTC, really, and CMA. If these if these arguments go all the way to the end and Microsoft wins, that's only going to embolden them because they know that well, if we won with Activision, anything that's smaller than that, that also while we as long as we remain a smaller company than Sony. So uh, there is a limit, um, but, uh, but it's like, as long as we remain smaller than Sony, uh, anything is kind of a fair game at a certain point. Um, so yeah, they could go out there and buy pretty much anything if they win these cases. Cause it's like, that's it. There's nothing that the FTC could do at that point. Um, but who, 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 like the chances are those cases are not going to get to that point. They will get settled. They will have their, their caveats added on, and then the, everyone will just kind of move away from the deal without any sort of thing being settled as in, you know, a, a, a legally, oh, this thing is okay. It's just like, no, we gave it the rubber stamp and here you go. Um, in those cases, they probably could still face, well, they would still face scrutiny, but I think anything smaller than Activision, especially things that are going to be significantly smaller, like a Sega, they probably could pull that off. Now, of course, that deals with Japanese law. Japanese mm -hmm. law has been more lax recently, but it's still very complicated for an American company to go in there. But, you know, if the alternative is, let's say, Tencent, like Tencent's like sniffing around, well, the Japanese would be like, well, we would prefer an American company come in rather than Tencent. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I think that Sega is always a possibility, but everyone always thinks that. So we'll see. People have been clamoring for this. And I, I guess I guess Sega does make sense for Xbox. You know, they, they really want to build up their PC development, and they do have a lot of great PC franchises Sega's and a, PC a very, developers. Very successful PC publisher so, now, yes. You know, and they've talked about how they want to grow PC Game Pass, and it's like that would make a lot of sense. Um, I just particularly don't care that much about Sega, right? So Bethesda, Bethesda was huge for me because I'm such a Bethesda fan of all yes. of the Bethesda things. The Activision one, it's kind of like, but you haven't I even don't care played about Fallout. Warcraft. I don't even really care about Blizzard. I, I play Call of Duty every year, but I play for the single player. So yeah, you're gonna save me seventy bucks for like the single player. And it's like hopefully they can unshackle some of these teams from the call of duty machine and let them like, Oh, high moon studios. I really liked them when they made those transformers games, Jeff, during the 360 gen. Um, I, I forget what the, the, they were called, but they made two of them or uh Raven when they did uh, singularity. It's like, yep. it would be, that would be my hope from the deal is like, sure. You keep call of duty, but like you also allow you want to unlock the potential yeah. in a way that Activision Bobby Kotick locked it down. And yeah, made it exactly. smaller and more focused on one thing. And even when those other things, when they would try those other things, were successful. You got Crash, Crash Bandicoot 4, a very well-performing game. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 was, was huge. And we're not getting follow-ups to those things? Well, no, because they think Call of Duty could still make more money. That will not be the way it would work under Microsoft because the incentive, as we've seen with these smaller games getting approved and coming out and, and performing really well under Game Pass... The incentive is completely different, and Toys for Bob can go back to making different games rather than working on Call of Duty and uh, all these other studios. Uh, that would be the hope. Yeah, Jez just really wants it because he wants 
World of Warcraft Unshackled from Bobby, and he wants Blizzard to do what Blizzard can do and bring back, uh, what, what was it you want them to bring back? Starcraft? Starcraft, man. Dude, you Philistine. <laughs> <laughs> something, something, far cra- something Starcraft, I guess? I don't know. So, <sighs> yeah, that's I, his whole thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just... Uh... I just think there's just there's a lot of Blizzard property, but not just Blizzard, but Activision property that I think would make would fit into that world of hi-fi rushing, shadow dropping, double A plus games like you know your your sort of StarCraft shooter or your you know a Diablo God of War spin off or something like that. You know, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of potential in that IP for Game Pass double A plus games that Activision is never going to make because, like we said earlier. They don't want to make those kind of games. They just want to chase the trend and the battle passes and stuff like that. But as a platform holder, Microsoft and Sony would have different objectives. You know, to be honest, I yes. wouldn't even mind if if it was Sony that was buying Activision Blizzard. Definitely because, not. Yeah. It would definitely be better than than Activision mm-hmm. the way it yeah. is today. Yes. Well, it's, Judge, you even made you even made the argument that you want Sony to buy Square Enix because you think Sony could give them the stability that they need than they that they currently yeah. don't have because they're a mess. Yeah, I, I honestly like if I yeah seriously a lot of these publishers are just sort of tripping over themselves trying to figure out like where the value for their shareholders comes from these days. Right, and, and Jim like, Ryan would be like, "It's not NFTs. Come on, guys. Like, yes, like at least we could yes. count on it for that. Absolutely. Well, we we hope so. <laughs> we hope so. But, uh, okay. I believe. I but, believe in Jimbo. I believe yeah. in you, Jimbo. But, uh, the, well, the only one that doesn't seem to be floundering is Capcom, weirdly, and I just wonder how sustainable that is. You know, is is, is Capcom too too? Listen, flops you can keep remaking Resident Xbox. Evil forever. Yes, <laughs> after Most they do four, time. re remake Code Veronica, right, and then uh, mm-hmm. we go from there. Um, and then you remake what, one again and start over. Yes. Yeah. So we were just on the topic of Square Enix, Jeff. Do you think Xbox? solves whatever problems there are with Square Enix anytime soon? Or do you, do you know what the problems are? Have you, you mean have you resolves, heard resolves the, the strange relationship? Yeah. Well, what's I'm, going on between Square Enix and Xbox? I mean, I think the, the, the relationship is that Sony gives them money, and mm-hmm. Sony's pretty pretty uh, strict about that stuff. And and Microsoft wants to avoid any... Or, I'm sorry, Square Enix wants to, do any, uh, to avoid anything that might trip up that relationship. I mean, I've heard that happen many times before, and this has got to be one of the biggest sort of situations where Sony is given a lot of money and the people that are receiving that money don't want to risk that. I don't think it's too, I don't think it's some mystery. But it's so uh, weird though, that then they then complain that their games need a worldwide audience and they complain that Final Fantasy VII Remake doesn't sell enough. It's like, well, I don't know, maybe you should put it on more consoles then? I, I, maybe just... they're putting that out there for Sony's sake. <laughs> I'd be like, please, Sony. Let us go yeah, multi like, even, even that, like, so Final Fantasy VII Remake, before it went to PC, I think, uh, was like, it sold like 5 million units on, on the PlayStation 4. And that's like not, that doesn't even measure up to what other, like, uh, exclusive uh, big PlayStation games do. Like, some of the bigger ones were doing 10 million, 15 yeah. million. Yeah, 15 million. Persona's at like 5 million or whatever. So, I mean, right. It's like, why is Final Fantasy VII Remake this thing that was supposed to be this massive, massive return? Why is that only doing five million on PlayStation Four? So, I, 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 I think That's they think weird. their problems are bigger than just uh, than not being on Xbox. And it's like, if our problems are bigger, maybe we got to take our money where we can get it, and then that kind of keeps them in that loop. Uh, I, I agree that that they would be better off um, going with uh, putting stuff on Xbox. And I think when they have put on stuff stuff on Game Pass, I think they've been very pleasantly surprised at the results. Um, but they definitely cannot put stuff on Game Pass that has any sort of relationship with Sony. And then if they are hoping to keep on, uh, keep getting money from Sony for certain things, Sony uh, Square Enix would not want to risk putting that stuff on, on Xbox. I think. Yeah. They, I think they're really hurting out by not being on the switch, especially in Japan. It's like, yeah, you know, yes. the PlayStation doesn't do well, but then it's like, you can't make the high, the really graphically demanding games because the switch can't really do those. So I don't think um, a game like Final Fantasy seven remake, like doesn't need photorealism to be fun i don't think i think that's another that's another albatross the square enix has is that they always want to they always want to produce these absolutely insane photorealistic games with their with their engines and stuff i mean but then you get for pc specs like for for spoken which undoubtedly dented its sales 
coupled with the $70 price point. A lot of people don't even want to want to consider risking $70 to just find out the game doesn't even run. And yeah, I know it had a demo. That's changed. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I find it funny. I don't know about if you guys find this funny, but Sony was trying to buy up a lot of timed exclusives, right? For Spoken, Final Fantasy 16, all this stuff. But with Bethesda, they got Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. It, it it's kind of funny to me that it seemed like they picked the wrong game from Tango to get exclusive, right? Wouldn't you think? Like, yeah, yeah but they, they, they probably the knew one, what right? Tango was doing, and they chose the safer open world AAA game rather than the smaller, you know, focused rhythm game. Like, so there's like a world there that. Tang, like Ghostwire Tokyo comes out as multi-platform and Hi-Fi Rush is the one that gets timed exclusive from Sony, right? That's yep. a good uh, yeah. point. Yeah. Absolutely. That'd be, that'd be absolutely crazy. But, it's, uh, it's, but this is the, the image Sony wants to put out there is that they make these mature, photorealistic games. Like generally, they, 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 like, they don't really put out cartoony games, like even Little Big Planet. Is like kind of I mean, from the beginning, they've, they've wanted that sort of, I mean, even on PlayStation, like, they had the rule kind of no 2d games for a really long time so mm-hmm. like no we're the 3d console now obviously that that like a lot of that stuff kind of went away, by the wayside over time um uh, but yeah they, they, they definitely think you're right they think that the big expensive mature looking game is more important and they think that it helps their brand out more and in many cases they're right and but not in all cases clearly here yeah, yeah. Adana Ataku says, uh, does anyone know what's going on with Project Mara? I always figured that it would be ready before Hellblade 2, and now it feels like Hellblade 2 might be first. I don't know. Damn thing about that. No. Yeah, me neither, and I don't, think it, I don't think it's coming anytime soon. Yeah, Hellblade's definitely before Mara, I would say. Yes. I've, I've always thought Hellblade 2 was before Mara. And Mara could be, you know, thinking about it, Mara could be one of those things that you shadow drop in the future try to get like oh here's a horror game for first party pt vibes go play it now and then it kind of has that whole virality thing i mean granted that'd be years from now but it's something that um you know i wouldn't be surprised if, if they were doing it um let's see we got a uh uh some of these questions like the abk thing was from untidy tim he also wants to know who has more leaks, Jeff, Jez, or Jeff, because we know Rand doesn't leak things because he's not an insider yeah oh, that's right i'm not an insider the... i think it's Rand. i was just patreon questions now I was just read. I was taken from them because some of them had some some good questions, oh, you right, know. Right. So, um, I don't leak stuff. I'm not an insider. I've constantly I, said it. I want I want Jeff's opinion on this. Jeff, what makes someone an insider, in your opinion? Because Rand claims he's yeah. not an insider, but I I think it's someone that has ongoing close relationships with people who work inside the companies that these people talk about. Hmm. That's an interesting. What do you think about that round? <laughs> what, eh? I mean, <laughs> oh, he's speechless. He's <laughs> speechless. About, I mean, say, 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 what was your definition again? Say, repeat yes. that one more time. <laughs> yeah. People that have close relationships with the people who work inside the company that they talk about. So if you talk about a certain company, you have close relationships with the people inside there. I would say that qualifies uh, a person as an insider. Yeah, but I mean, like, mm-hmm. I talk like, to well, I let's talk say, to, let's, I, oh, sh- let's I hear Rand's Phil. excuses now. I talk to Phil all the mm-hmm. time, but Phil doesn't give me any information. Well, we just yes. talk about stuff. Right. Close relationship with the people that give you the stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't ask anybody at Xbox for information. I never me, have me because I, I have, I have friends at Xbox. I don't want to put them in a position where something they tell me could get them in trouble. I'm not going to do that, right? Uh, the stuff I hear is from, like, secondhand sources of, like, they heard from, like, is basically twice removed, like, one person removed. And I, I've known them for years, <laughs> so it's kind of like, if you're saying this, then I believe you. But, I mean, I don't know if it's true. I mean, look, so, so they're, like, insiders in laws. <laughs> so I, I remember in 2020, 2021, there were certain people telling me that I trusted that Starfield was coming out in 2021. I remember this. Uh, and I was like, hey, some people are telling me this. And then Jason Schreier was like, who's an idiot? Anybody's an idiot for believing it was coming 2021 or whatever. Uh, you like, But like, those are the things that were He's at least... so kind, isn't he? He's just one of yeah. the kindest people in the industry. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't... Like it says, like, even... even like. I was told Hi-Fi Rush. Well, you 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 said Hi-Fi Rush was coming, and I was told from two other people that Hi-Fi Rush was definitely going to be there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's actually true or not. I'm just going based off of what other people are telling me that I trust. Um, one of them even told me Forza was going to be delayed. I didn't believe him. 
Because he didn't believe the source. He didn't believe the person telling him. So he's like, Forza is delayed. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Right? And I, But then it was true. So, you know, I mean, so none of, none of what people, I, what information that I ever use comes from people at Xbox. I don't want to put people in that position of getting fired. I don't want to do that to anybody. Yeah, it's it's yep. satellite Terry. of people yep. or around that maybe they talk to. I don't know. But I, I'm not. Predictions. Ran- no. Uh, well, if you're not an insider, then you're, you're a soothsayer or clairvoyant. Yeah, you're Nostradamus. Well, but- you're Nostradamus. <laughs> I was no so, I mean, some, some of those predictions are <laughs> things I know, and then it's like, oh, it actually happens. But uh, you know, y- yay me for for getting it right. Um, I think so. Sorry, no awful says. Do you think we'll see a step up in the quality of games coming from Microsoft's first party studios moving forward this year, uh, Jeff? Do you think moving yeah. forward will? Because yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I'm sorry for cutting you off. No, it's okay. I was I I think I was just going to generally agree with that. Uh, I think we'll see better games going forward than we have uh, before. I think that the, I think my expectation is that slowly the quality of games coming out of Xbox will continue to increase for the foreseeable future. I think that they are taking that seriously and that's going to, that's one of the things to require that's requiring a lot of delays, but I think that's those delays are going to continue to pay off. Man, Rand, you're missing all the fun questions, man. What are the, I, I was going to get to those more towards the end, the fun questions oh, so okay. we can send, yeah, that's why yeah, I was. How, you, over, how are you going to track them? You've got neither all, all, because all, all I'm, in a messed I'm, up order. Because I'm better than you, and I can I know what I've read and what oh, yeah, I what's yeah. what stuffs where. You, oh, yeah, you forgot, forget what forgot you had you. for breakfast two, ten you minutes ago. Rand's ran out here with his two hundred IQ. You can't even pronounce pronounce wacky incorrectly, Rand. <laughs> They're just words. You're the one today that thought Chicago was on the East Coast <laughs> and was hit by a tsunami, and you didn't know. Dude, we we would literally do every podcast at two p.m. <laughs> Central, and you're like, today is it three p.m. Eastern? Are you in the Eastern time zone? I'm like, what are you talking about? We've been doing this for six years. <laughs> I I don't know why, but I thought Chicago was hit by a tsunami, and therefore <laughs> must have been on the coast. You know those tsunamis that come off of Lake Michigan, Jeff, yeah, right? Yeah, they're, they're... yeah, totally. Well, even the tsunamis coming off the, the Atlantic Ocean on the East Coast, <laughs> which doesn't happen. <laughs> Does it? But wasn't New York hit by a tsunami as well at the same time? No. Why, well, do, I, actually, why do I think this? Why do I think tsunami? these too many movies? Was it I mean, in a hurricane? movie? Are you talking about hurricanes or something? No, like a tsunami. Was it in a movie? A hurricane, a hurricane went up the East Coast and hit New York and a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah that happens. Oh, I can't remember. But a hurricane's never going to be able to get that far inland to Chicago, let alone, I think you're in Ohio now, right, Jeff? Like, Yeah, I've, we've been hit by one hurricane that was so powerful it made its way through Ohio, and that was like 10 years ago, and our power is out for two weeks. So oh, okay. it, it does happen, but it's really rarely, really, really rare. Yeah. yeah so is what um, I, I I was so sure Chicago was on the coast for some reason. I just, you, couldn't, you couldn't be more wrong. It's like the least yeah. coast city. Yeah, it's, it's the middle of the country. They say it's Midwest, but it's more eastern. It's central it's in the time Midwest zone. region. The Midwest region yeah. is not uh, an actual direction. It's just like that's what the region's called. I know Ohio's landlocked because someone said to me it's a flyover state. Yep. Yeah. It, that, None it, that of this is, is wrong. True. Yep. I'm right on Lake um, Erie. I can get on a boat though. So, <laughs> what are you expecting from the consoles for the rest of this gen, Jeff? Are Are you looking for slim? For the Series X, are, are, are you are you expecting a mid-gen upgrade, a 25 teraflop mid-gen upgrade, where the hell they would... What, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I, I mean, the only reason I think they would do, and this is why they did it last gen, uh, the only reason they would do uh, mid-gen upgrades, now, like, not revisions, but upgrades, is if for some reason they felt like the price was going to start coming down, they were going to have to start lowering the price of the consoles. I don't think we are at any risk of either of these companies lowering the price of either of these systems anytime soon. Uh, they can keep selling them for five hundred dollars, and in Sony's case, five fifty, for a very, very long time. And uh, especially following Nintendo's lead of Nintendo never lowered the price of the Switch the entire generation, uh, that's sort of become the norm. And so I think they're going to keep doing it. So what they're going to do instead is they will keep putting out revisions. In Sony's case, they're mostly going to keep being stealth revisions. Maybe there'll be slightly some other changes. Maybe the stealth revision might involve. Well, now everything is a digital console, and you could buy that disk drive separately. Um, I, I don't know if the, how they'll actually pull that off, but maybe that's what they're thinking. Uh, on Xbox side of things, they've kind of the Xbox Series X is already kind of the Xbox Series Pro. It's already super powerful. It's already as compact, I think, as they can get it. 
yeah, they can make some changes in the future, but the thing's are already so uh, ex expertly put together. You don't, you probably wouldn't mess with that. So I, I think we're, I think we're probably looking at them mostly sticking with these systems as they are uh, through most of this, most of this generation. And uh, if we get revisions, they will be in the form of more storage, more storage, and maybe some fun colors, things like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of agree with you, but. I sort of feel like, depending on how long this gen goes, like why not? Re Do you? I guess the question is, can, could they release a mid-gen upgrade that's more like if you keep the PS5 and the Xbox Series X at 500, 550, which I, th I think Xbox Series X price has gone up to 550 because they're bundling in Forza Horizon, so they're signed They're kind of doing the Sony thing a little yep, bit here in the states. That's what Sony did in America. Yeah, yeah. I would I would I would imagine Starfield will be included at some point because yeah. like like that just makes sense. So I was like, in two, three years, could they get away with having a PS5 Pro and an Xbox Series X, but then selling it for seven hundred, six fifty? I, I mean, I think they, they think they could, but I mean, it's really going to really, really depend on where we're at with games because uh, uh, the, the pressure won't like pe most people will be still really happy with their systems because like think about it today, like we're looking around. Uh, these games coming out do not feel like they're anywhere close to tapping out the, the, these, these, the hardware that we have. Uh, both Sony and Microsoft are, are just barely now getting onto games that will only be for this new generation. Um, in three years, will that have feel like it's tapped out? Maybe, uh, but uh, you know, the, the CPU power will probably be very far from being tapped out, and the graphical power is going to only be limited, but not only, but it will be primarily limited by time and money on the development side. And that's not going to change. Like that's still going to be the, the limiting factor at that point. Uh, that's not to say they can't market reasons to make you feel like either the four stops and lessons will make you want to get the new one. And this is what Nintendo does. And Nintendo's done this for all its handhelds, except for the switch where they never actually released a pro, but they released a, an upgraded version for all of their handhelds that make you think, well, I got to go get this new one. And then you sell the old one or you hand off the old one to a, a, you know, a sibling or something like that, or a cousin. And then they start buying games too. And that's like a, a backdoor way of growing their, their install base. That's stuff, that's stuff they could pull off, but they could just as easily pull that off with slims and with, uh, and with imp like increased storage and special versions of the systems that are designed to look like games. Uh, those things work just, just fine for these consoles in the past and they will probably mostly rely on them uh for the for the most part I, it, the, the the thing is like they can get their benefit on the other side like yeah you can raise the price but what you can really do is just make these consoles even more uh, uh affordable to manufacture and just keep selling them for that same high price and that actually might be the better strategy this generation yeah do you do you think it hurt microsoft not having the series x in stock this holiday really because it basically didn't seem like you could get one it was the series s or that was it yes that's uh definitely seemed like that i mean i think that they were yeah they were still struggling to keep up that's is that what you're asking like are they like like they made them not have a, yeah because it, it seemed to me that they were like boom we're gonna go in we're gonna go toe to toe with playstation we don't even know we don't have a game they got god of war we're gonna go in on the price and the value we're gonna cut this thing yeah. to 240 Right, we're gonna we're gonna hope that that's what people choose, and we don't have a lot of stock of the Series Xs. Mainly, I, I did sort of hear that I think they're in the process of cutting down the production costs, or maybe moving from mm -hmm. seven to six nanometer or whatever, and that was the reason. And I know they've been putting a lot of those Series Xs in the in, in their data centers for the clouds, but it sort of felt the fact that I think you, I, I don't know if it's true today, but it was a couple weeks ago that the Series S is still on sale for two forty. It still seems like the holiday bundies, bundle's still available. And, like, I'm sure you saw the MPD leaked info uh, of the actual, like, sales numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't really seem like, micro like Microsoft's bet on the Series S doing work and competing with, play like, it that seemed to not pan out at all. And it almost yeah. kind of feels like, is that market for that system already sort of tapped out that's early in the gen and what people are looking for is the powerhouse series X, you know? I, I mean, I think that the series X serve a, a, a very functional purpose of when you have a big game that people are looking for. And if it is a massive appeal game, the series S will, will be there for, for that audience. It's, it should not be the thing that Microsoft relies on to as, as 
that was never going to be the case. It's I don't think that's the case, and I do think yeah that they're going to be hurt by that. Um, it was I, they, they should they should know, and I think they do know that uh, having only the Xbox Series S on store shelves is is not great, and it was always going to hold them back. And I mean, I think they were reflected in in the MPD numbers and reflected in uh, the the their earnings report and it being down pretty significantly year over year because of hardware sales. Yeah. So um, they, uh, yes, I, th I do expect them to, once they are able to, to really refocus on the Xbox Series X going forward, and then when we get to a place where um, a big game comes out, or like even a big third-party game that everyone wants to play, like, I mean, who knows? Hogwarts Legacy, I know that's a, a game associated with, um, with Sony because the marketing deal, but if like you can get it, if people are like, hey, well, I want really want to play that game. Well, the Xbox Series S is there. You can play it on there. Maybe that's where it like can strategically be focused on at that point for that kind of audience. But I don't know. We'll see. You ever notice? And I only bring this up because I've noticed it a couple times. The games that Sony has really strict marketing for, they're not even allowed to put trailers on the Xbox Store for. Yes. Like yeah, Hogwarts, they... Hogwarts Legacy does not have a trailer. When you go to that, when you go to their landing page. No trailer plays. Kalista Protocol, same way. You know, Resident Evil so does. Weird. Because, like, I, I think that's not as strongly as, as marketed. But any of the games that Sony has that big marketing for, like, they're not even allowed to put a trailer on there, which I think is so ridiculous. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's Sony's lawyers just getting, to, like, going to work. And... Yeah, but I don't understand why, like, it takes two to tango. So it takes two people to sign the deal, right? And And you would think like Hogwarts yeah. is more has more of the leverage because they're the actual game. So it's like, why would you agree to a thing that was going to limit your sales on another console? Because I think the data shows that, you know, showing a trailer of a game actually increases it. Why would you agree to that? Be like, well, you can't even have the trailer at the X. I, I don't understand well, I mean, that. The idea would be, well then yeah, yeah, we'll do that, but then we need even more money. And I think that yeah. that's how it works. It's like every little bit, every little inch that the companies give, that's more money from Sony. I think that's how it's viewed. Um, yeah. I think I think that's how it's working. Yeah, you're right. We got a, a question here from Nate Miller, which is more off the wall. What is your ideal vacation spot and activity? Yeah, um, a <laughs> chalet right <laughs> on the mountain, uh, and it, it, like basically you could ski up to it, so that I can take my snowboard, walk out, get on the lift, go up the mountain. Uh, snowboard down, and then I get back to the bottom of the hill, and right there is my my the place where I'm staying. That's the mm -hmm. ideal. And go inside; it's warm. Go outside; there's a fire. Uh, lots of lots of booze. Uh, probably like an N64 <laughs> on an old CRT in the basement, and I'm good. That's me. That's you. You, you, Jez, got, you, gotta... you go. You snowboard. Yes. How how are you this like effortlessly cool? You know, well, I just imagine. Listen, I was I was born this way, baby. <laughs> Well, for me, my ideal idea of vacation is stay at home. Uh, everyone leaves me alone. I'll play Warcraft for a bit. That's pretty good, too. That's pretty good, too. I, I, I couldn't tell you last time I was on vacation. Maybe E3 2016 when I hit a million on the thing with Xbox. Um, I don't even know. My my favorite activity is like playing a great video game. But I'm playing Dead Space right now, and it's incredible. Or like reading a really good book. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really been any uh you know on vacation anywhere so that's that's tough to say that's i don't know i don't know what to be my i literally probably my last vacation was like walt disney world when i was in eighth grade which was oh, fantastic wow. i it's i think to myself am i a loser i haven't been on vacation and like i don't know how long. <laughs> if you don't feel the you urge know? to go on vacation sounds like you're already living the right life so yeah you're, 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 I, think dude, I, I like i only go on vacation really because my girlfriend makes me so like <laughs> once i'm once i'm there i like it and we, like we go to the beach and sure. you know, we go to the like there's this hotel and spa that we always go to where they've got massage people and a swim a swim pool private pool i really like it but at the same time it's like man i hours traveling and it's like man that's a lot of money and i just think wow warcraft is so much cheaper <laughs> <laughs> that's i do the same sort of math absolutely <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jasper Shep wants to know, what was your dream job when you were a kid? Uh, yeah, I wanted to be a movie director or a video game journalist. Really? You wanted to <laughs> be a video game journalist? Listen, I was a dumb kid, all right? Mm. I didn't know any hey, better. you got your That's dream amazing. job, man. I, did, I didn't know people actually wanted to be a video game journalist. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I grew up reading Ultra Game Players, Game Players, and Electronic Gaming Monthly, and the people writing those magazines were so cool. They had, they had like, so much personal. 
Shu and uh, and uh, Damian Lin and uh, all the guys from game players, like many of them like now like work in the games industry. I think one of them does the uh, Nintendo Power Pad podcast for Nintendo. And I was just like, I mean, I want to like be among those people. They're so cool. And then so I kind of was That's like, awesome. yeah, I'm gonna try to do that job. And it worked out. That's really awesome. What was your dream remember. job, Rand? I don't remember what my dream job was as a kid, honestly. Was it to be an electrician? Um, I mean, no, that was more, that was more out, that was more out of necessity than anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this you, the YouTube thing just was just like, I did YouTube as a hobby. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just like I'm gonna do this, and then, I mean, I don't know, like having a me. job where it's having a job where like. Uh, you know i'm my own boss and i can do whatever i want whenever i want is sort of fulfilling but then also i'm also the worst boss because it's like if i don't want to do something then i don't need to do it you know so it's like oh i should make a video today and it's like eh, i'm gonna go read a book and it's like all right well nobody's gonna yell at me for it right um it, it has its perks and its minuses and stuff yeah you, you, know? should, definitely. you should you should hear rand cry when i ask him to reply to an email from an advertiser Dude, I don't like, do emails, oh, I don't bro. Email. I don't know. I don't, I don't do email. I, I suck. I don't do emails, man. That's, that's, that's <laughs> well, the thing. Like, you do. You, you do when it's American company because I can't do. Well, with yeah, the American company doesn't send. Yeah, yeah, it's like okay, but yeah. I, I um, wanted to be a else? paleontologist. Paleontologist. When I was Is when that... I was really really young, I was obsessed with dinosaurs, and that was the only job I wanted to do. I wanted to dig up dinosaurs, and then when I was in high school, I told the careers advisor. Because we have careers advisor in Britain, um, and every kid has to go and see the careers advisor. I was like, I want to be a paleontologist, and she basically like laughed at me. So then I was just like, I became a nihilist, and I was like, Fine, mm. I'll just do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do nothing, and then I've ended a view of High Fry Rush that docked it because it's an Xbox game. Oh, hang on a sec, we might have disconnected. Did, Did we, we disconnect? disconnect? I don't know. I uh, didn't see this. They, that can't be real. What did they, What did they say for real? No, yeah, we're still live. We're still live. Okay, I'm gonna let's, read this. Metro uh, High Five Rush. They and the, listen. That's just a dumb move because they're gonna their their replies on Twitter are gonna be a yeah, mess. Yeah. So <laughs> they're, they they said here. So they gave it an 80, which is a good score, uh, you know. And they said, admittedly, that's not saying much, given this is also the first Xbox Series exclusive to be published by Microsoft themselves. The wasteland that has been Xbox release schedules for the last few years limits the accolades we can give the game. That doesn't make I don't I don't, I don't follow that But it's a breath of all. fresh air for Xbox gamers, developer Tango Gameworks, and the rhythm. I just it's like to do they that like to yeah I get like you said the you said the silent part out loud right right like, <laughs> but it's like also like you, I mean like do you mean it the way you're saying it like do you. So it's like, no, wouldn't that make it easier to give it accolades? Because it's been such a uh, a wasteland that this thing, this thing stands out. Like, this is such a breath of fresh air. Isn't that really nice? Wouldn't that benefit the game? I No, you think it hurts the game? How? I, I don't under, I still They didn't explain how it hurts the game. So yeah. uh, I, I'm like wondering if they even mean, mean what they say. You got to understand what Metro is, right? It's like, it's below tabloid. Like, they offer the Metro for free on every train and every bus in the UK. And basically, it's just full of trash. It's like trash and then an ad. Trash and then an ad. Trash right. and then an ad. So, like, it's the sort of... It's owned by the same comp the same guy that owns the Daily Mail in the UK, if you're familiar with that uh, publication. Oh, okay, yes, I am very familiar with the Daily Mail. Yeah, so it's the Daily... It's basically the free version of the Daily Mail, and it's like the government uses it as a vehicle for pop propaganda and stuff like that, so... Yeah. You can expect the absolute lowest-grade quality writing and journalism from that outlet, unfortunately, but... Um... Sorry, no waffle says, what is your guys' preferred non-alcoholic beverage to drink? Milk. Milk. <laughs> okay. Man, I got a Gross. story about this. I was in a, I was in a restaurant in Germany... A really posh restaurant and man i i just didn't really know this right but they, they were like what what did you like to drink and i was like i'd like a glass of milk and the waitress looked at me like i was a freak is that can you get milk in an american restaurant but because usually yeah usually yeah you, a lot well, of times, it depends sure. on the restaurant i think yeah, in, but, in but, Germany, listen, but but, yeah, but it, like I was crazy. an adult man ordering milk is a weird thing it is kind of weird yes thank gonna lie it is weird it's so tasty, though. I, I don't get it. But what's your favorite um, non-alcoholic drink, then, Jeff? I I usually go for unsweetened iced tea. Uh, 
because uh, I tried to drink, stop drinking pop, but I'll still order a Coke Zero at a restaurant or whatever, something like that. And I enjoy that. Um, but yeah, mostly it's, I mean, honestly, my favorite drink is water, ice water. Mm. Give me an ice water. Fuck, I can go for an ice water right now. I should I... want these kids to go get me an ice water. I used to drink, I used to drink Mountain Dew all the time. Uh, then I switched to Diet Coke, and uh, I recently, two years ago, I went cold turkey off of caffeine. I've been I I exclusively drink Propel now. Um, right, that like flavored water stuff. Flavored yeah. water. I I I like water. I just can't drink straight water, Jeff. I just can't do it. But give oh, me yeah, like I'm flavored water. It. Like I've been drinking this stuff for two years. Strawberry lemonade. Their watermelon. Uh, their kiwi strawberry. Love it. I, I get this, uh, I buy, you know, get a couple cases, uh, every couple of weeks from Amazon. Um, you know, cause I'm on a diet. I've lost like 70 pounds, uh, cutting out like, uh, you know, caffeine was a big thing. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever tried cutting out caffeine, Jeff, but when I cut out caffeine, I literally couldn't walk for four days. Jeez, yeah. Like, you know, most I, people um, talk about like the headaches cold. they would get, right? Yeah. Like the, the headaches. I was thinking, okay, I can deal with the headaches. I literally had the worst back pain you could possibly imagine. I couldn't move. I needed people to come over and help me get out of bed. That's how much pain I was in for three Jeez. days. Jesus Christ. And it just went away. Just as quickly as it came, it was gone. I would probably be in the same case because I, I definitely you have used caffeine to self-medicate for a very long time. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. We, uh, we got a, maybe a couple more minutes with Jeff. If anybody has a question, uh, they want answered, uh, make sure you put it in chat. I think I've read all the, uh, the ones on the Patreon. Um, I, we got one from Mikey here. Uh, he says, I know it's impossible to find the t- time to play all the games you want. So in a dream scenario where you have all the time in the world, what games would you love to do a second playthrough or just revisit because it's been so long? I, um, I've been uh, wanting to go back to Breath of the Wild, of course. Um, recently, I, actually, I have been thinking about going back to Skyrim, doing another playthrough there. Uh, basically, anything that has sort of a sandboxy feel and just going back to it. But, I mean, there are games I go back to all the time. I mean, I've been going back to nonstop since it came out and the, the new series of Hitman since 2016. Ooh, yeah. uh, now they've got the new new freelancer mode. I'm, yeah, I'm, it's I'm really good. that. It rules. Oh. So, yeah, the... There are games I do go back to, but um, the ones I like dream about going back to are those bigger sandbox ones. Jazz is like World of Warcraft, man. I come back to what it was every the question? day. <laughs> exactly. What What were the games you want to come back to? Like you know, he says there's you, he knows people don't have a lot of time for stuff, and a dream scenario for if you had all the time in the world, what would you love to do a second playthrough of or just revisit? Hmm. That's a really good question. Probably the, the yeah, like Jeff, the Skyrim's, the Fallout's. I'm kind of I kind of want to because they're 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 re-releasing Fallout Four, right? But Fallout Four is like, so I I kind of dropped off that after finishing the main story. I never did any DLC, so I'm hoping that maybe I'll go back and do Fallout Four's DLC, which I heard was pretty good. Also, Dragon Age Inquisition. There's loads of DLC in there that I never did. In, f- in fact, I don't think I did any of Dragon Age Inquisition's DLC. Um, even though like it had what, like three or four DLC packs, so like a lot of the games that have had DLC drops that I just never had time to go back to, I'd, I'd like to do that. I think, um, yeah, definitely Dragon Age. What? Because one thing I used to do when I was younger was when a when a game had a sequel that was coming out, like a Mass Effect or a Dragon Age or whatever, I'd go back and play the previous games to like refresh refresh myself and just like nowadays it's like what when would i ever have the time i remember metal gear solid 3 came out i went back and did one and two and mega solid 4 came back came out i went and did one two and three back to back and then played four there's just no way i'd have time for that now so loads of games i guess but stuff yeah like that, stuff. not for me yeah, really so. like i don't really revisit trending. anything yeah trending. no i just i just i just i just don't really revisit anything i just yeah i play the trending. game and you know that's it's, not true. It's not that you're swiping on TikTok and it's not there. Your favorite games. Are I mean, there. I literally <laughs> just played. Th- I, I, pl- I just played through Somerville. That wasn't trending. It wasn't even trending when it came out. I, I, I played don't even through know that. What that is. It's <laughs> from. It's one of the guys who left. Um, what was the studio who made uh, Inside and Limbo? Uh, Play Dead. Play Dead. Oh, yeah, the it's one of the guys yeah. that left, and he he doing. He's at Jump Ship, and well, it was basically kind of. Yeah, came, basically they announced it the week before it came out. And all these trailers leading up oh. to it, they went silent for a while, and they're like, it's out next week. And then like nobody really cared. <sighs> and whatever. And Rip. 
uh, yeah, I play that. So I, I don't know what I, I probably wouldn't revisit anything. What I would want is for these, give me a Bioshock remake. Give me Dead Space 2 remake. Give me some of the games that I played and enjoyed in previous gens and just remake them for now. I'd play them again. Kotar, can't wait for that. You know, remake Jade Empire or something, you know? Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in really revisiting anything. Uh, Donataku says, Jeff, make Rand and Jez both play Breath of the Wild so they can experience greatness. Yeah, I'm, actually I'm, I'm working it. on it. I'm working on a threat to make them let, yeah. let them know how serious I am. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I own Breath of the Wild as one of the games I bought with uh, the Switch when I did buy the Switch. I just... I don't know. I just can't bring myself to play it. I, I hear about how the what like one of my biggest pet peeves in games is either crafting or like repairing weapons or weapon degradation in general. I can't stand it. Yeah, and a, it's, that's why I hate it when uh, in a video game like Halo, where my gun runs out of uh, ammo and I have to pick up a new gun, I just put the game down because it's that's basically <laughs> weapon degradation. It's the same thing. You'll no, be it's fine. Not. Absolutely not. It's not the it's same. It's the thing. same. It works exactly the same in in Breath of the Wild. I promise you. You you're going to fight. Your weapon breaks. It basically runs out of ammo. And then you look around, and there's like five other weapons in the middle of the fight. You pick it up and you keep fighting. That's sword a, doesn't exactly the, the sword same as Halo. shouldn't have ammo though. Makes exactly. sense the gun run out of ammo. It breaks. Swords makes break in real life, man. It makes sense the swords break. Uh. Listen, they break a little fast, but it, it basically it's the same flow as the weapon running out of ammo. It's it's basically the same thing. It's uh, it, it also keeps you on your toes. It's a good thing. It makes the game even better. I know people have a real mental hang up on it. Um, it's a great game though. Yeah, you guys you guys would enjoy it if you gave it a shot. I probably I probably would. I, but uh, I, I I usually play my Switch hooked up to my TV. Uh, I don't play anything mobile or handheld. Maybe maybe I'm making a mistake there, but I have the pro controller. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I will. Maybe I'll go back and and and, and I do want to play Bayonetta three. Um, because I, I do I do like that. So maybe there are an instance when I can just hook up the switch and play through some stuff. But, um, yeah, you know what? I think we we hit that two hour mark. I don't want to keep you, uh, you know, too long. So. I figured this would be a good spot to end the show. I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I want to thank Jeff for uh, coming in and talking to us. Uh, so, Jeff, I know you did at the beginning, but uh, you can once again shout yourself out, let everybody know uh, where they can find you and your content. Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone knows who you are, but. Oh, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. It's, uh, You're awesome, man. I, Thank you so much. No, you guys, you guys are great. Uh, you guys always put on a good show, so I'm, I'm really glad to be a part of it. It means a lot. Uh, if you if you're interested, you want to hang out. I got a great community over at the discordgg slash Uh We got a lot of people over there constantly talking about games. Uh, all our stuff gets posted there, so you can keep up with us. But also, there's uh, always something cool happening. People are always playing games, or they're talking about something neat. Or they're, we're having uh, game nights, or we are um, doing like a fantasy critic thing. All that stuff happens over there. So go ahead and join up discord.gg slash game mess. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, I think that's the episode, right, Jazz? Two hours. We, keep, yeah. we don't want to, it's not like Colton Cognito are here. We can go for three hours because they're our bud buds. I don't, you know, I know Jeff is an important man, got things to do. I didn't want to. I didn't want to keep them. I got, I got uh, kids climbing all over yeah, me. Actually, I, I, you're yeah, yeah. Right. You got the kids, and it's like, yeah, you got some things to do. So and I want some marmite. You want some marmite? Yeah, marmite on toast. Oh geez. Plus, oh, Jess is hungry. You, I guess you guys don't eat. You don't. You don't I've never had. I've never had marmite. I will try it if I if it ever if it's ever in front of me. I will try Jeff, it. I will post you some marmite. Okay, sure. Yeah, sounds we'll, good. We'll make that happen. Is it like <laughs> Nutella? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna love it. If Nutella was like 99% salt. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds even better. Never mind. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think. That's so I guess the show. with with that, uh, that'll be this this month's Xbox Two Plus One. We'll be back on Friday for another episode of the uh, you know the OG Xbox Two show. And uh, yeah, keep it tuned to Patreon. Uh, we got the Xbox Two Ultimate show coming soon, and then. We gotta think of another guest. Who who do you think we should get on next, Jeff? Uh, you know we've had our buddies Lord Cognito and Colton. Even though I think of you as a buddy, you're also part of the industry because people were like, "We want more industry people," and I'm like, "Well, I need to get Grub on. I've wanted you on from when we started this. Like, who do you think would be good for for the show to have on? In your opinion, J Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Joe Biden would be great. Hey, Thank Joe. You. 
you know what? What do you think about Xbox and Hellblade 2? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he would have a wonderful answer. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Uh, I, I don't know. You guys can get whoever you want. You guys have already had on all the all the good guests now that I'm now that I've been on. So yeah, it's, it's downhill <laughs> from here, right? Yeah, exactly. You guys are good now. It's downhill mm. from here. Well, thank you so much Definitely. for being here, Jeff. Thanks for and having me. Go out to the patrons. Hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, if you're listening to this in a week from now, hope you hope you're having a great day. And with that, we are out of here, right, Jazz? Hell yeah! Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye.